smell like mean green sauce. I love that stuff. It's pretty good. It's a little sweet, though. Used very sparingly. It should be more spicy. But, uh, right now, I have... Let's down a little bit. Right now, I have the old setup set up, except for the computer setup. I ha it's still weird. Um, but I changed some stuff around. So now, if I move this window over here, so the, looking at the other window, my glance is like that, which is bad. It doesn't really work out. I need to put both monitors up here. That way I'd have kind of a better interface and then when I'm coding, I can at least look a little bit more away. I haven't had time to do that yet. I need to organize, I need to get all the stuff off of the desk and then implant the other monitor mount upstairs. I haven't been able to do that yet. I haven't had time. I've been working on software. So what I did is I rearranged the video monitor a little bit and I made a new scene. There's this one. So now, when I'm coding, I'm gonna be looking up here, which is a little unnatural to me right now. If I flip to the microscope view, I don't have the microscope view front and center. It's down here. So I need to rearrange the windows again. So what I gotta deal with, but chat has their own little home down there. Uh, I made the video windows a little smaller. So if I'm doing like CAD work, I can put it up here. I'll have more space. You guys will be able to see more of the CAD program and uh, it'll look like I'm naturally kind of looking at the code that everybody else is instead of looking at my crotch, which is what it looked like before. I was with the video window in sort of a natural location. Should probably get rid of the messages from last week. Let's clear chat. Well, you guys know what it looks like now. And when people trickle in and actually say stuff, maybe we'll, uh, We'll actually see that that chat window come into fruition. I need to have chat messages like naturally go away. That's the only way I'm gonna be able to do it. I have to have them naturally go away. Oh, my border is a little, it's a little weird. Hold on, I can fix that. I think it's 10 pixels away. Yeah. What, why did that get smaller? Uh, I guess it's scaling. <sighs> the the little windows that you can do in um, OBS, they're like locked into their dimensions. So when you scale them, they scale by dimensions, like a, as if it's a monitor feed. Whatever, I'll leave it for now. It's a little unnatural though. Lev would be very disappointed. This is the initial, this right here, I can point naturally I can point to the monitor and it looks like I'm pointing, like if I point a little lower than I should. Oh, that's great. That works really well. Yeah, getting the other monitor over here, the video capture window monitor all the way over here. I mean, stacking them on top of each other would be the ideal thing to do, huh? <sighs> this is Radioactive Sandwich, by the way. This is Julian and a buddy of mine from high school, Lauren. I mean, Julian and Lauren are buddies of mine from high school. Um, Julian's a lot older than, than me. <laughs> So we weren't exactly in the same situation. It was like senior year, he was in college. Um, but anyway, uh, two buddies of mine talking about getting Julian back on the show. I think only Fadanon is, is excited about that. <laughs> I know the rest of you are passively, but Fadanon is vocally excited about that. Um, yeah, talking about getting him back on the show, and I don't even know what the hell he's going to do. I don't know. We, I don't have a project. I don't have a project to work on with him. So we might just get him back on the show for the hell of it. He might just play music. I don't know what I do while he plays music, but uh, we'll figure something out. I could just poke him, you know, like do what he does when I'm actually working on a project. I hate my hair right now. I don't know what to do about it. It's not cooperating. It's it's too long. <laughs> it's too long. I, mankind wasn't meant to have hair like this. <sighs> That's why I put us back to the old view because it's a little lower. And so you can't see that my part is in a weird place today. <laughs> I have like four parts that I can exploit. And today the hair has decided to do that one. But I can't, I'm, I'm like a face cam streamer. I can't, I can't, I, I need like a makeup session ahead of time. I mean, that's a little better, but I'm still working on like berries and cream hair. A lot of typing, a lot of typing. 
Yeah, there it is. There I am. There I am. Yeah, there I am. That's me with just a slightly different hairstyle. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe I'm a little far off from berries and cream. Oh yeah, that's right. So this this monitor is just like right there, huh? This is the one that I should be using, which is slightly over to the side. <laughs> I love how uh, too many programming streams. Too many programming streams. Nobody's around anymore. They're like, great, bothers doing programming again, and they just flee. Nobody's nobody's like coming in here to watch my stream. I have no chat at the beginning of chat. <laughs> As my popularity wanes, I can feel better about having a constant deluge of programming streams on this show. But, we're almost done. We're almost done. We got two tasks to go. One of them is the beast. The beastly task that we're working on today, which is getting the physical side of this thing functioning. So we are going through the code Mistake by mistake, we're gonna get it working. Say Wiggly, thank you for subbing 40, 44 months. Uh, the numbers, the numbers are getting big and I'm not. Uh, <laughs> my middling popularity stream where where people have subbed for decades. We got 10, 10 years he's been subbed, look at that. 44 months, that's like 55 years he's been subbed since the beginning of time. Uh, and I haven't gotten any progress. Either keys, by the way, uh, I was talking about using them as a, just like a bit of variety uh, because we've been doing too much programming lately. I've been trying to get the simulator set up running. Um, so I will work on those keys. I will get those to you. These are the ones that actually fit back together. We have to put the new battery in them. As long as I've known him from day one, I turned around in a college class and said something to him. No, that was Tony. That's how I met Tony. Tony, I was like, you're interested in blankety blank? And then we worked on a group project together and then he broke my folding chair. Uh, no, this, how did I meet? I think, I think, I think St. Wiggly was through friends. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember, but whatever it is, that day is the day that he subbed to me. What's up, Jeffson? All I can do with this Bluetooth, 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 Bluetooth low energy code is lurk and suffer along. Yeah, it is a lot of suffering. We are gonna make breakthroughs today. Yeah, you have to do like the, whatever the sequence is to reprogram the car to accept the key. I'm wondering if I can go on eBay and just grab random, what's up Demi? I, I'm wondering if I can go on eBay and grab some random E46 keys and if they can work, right? Yeah, it must have been through mechan the mechanical engineers that I was friends with. John, John is more often than not popping into the stream, by the way. He's been, he's been around just through Twitch is the only way that I communicate with him. <laughs> but yeah, so today we're gonna make progress. Today we're gonna make progress. Oh, so it has to be keyed to the car. I need like, but I have all of the BMW, you don't understand. I have all of the BMW tools. I need to move them over to the better laptop, but right now they're on a netbook that barely runs. But I have all, like 74 gigabytes, all the manuals, all the electronic tools for BMWs. So if we can find a way to register a key with a car, yeah, I can do that. I can do what you just said. Silio Russo! Celia Russell's been subbing since the beginning of time. Celia Russell was like one of the first people. I mean, for it was John Kilo 3 was the first person to follow my channel, even before subs exist. But Celia Russell found my stream because she was like, guy with beard, click. <laughs> what is this picture? It's, it's a cat, right? It's gonna be a cat thing. It is, I don't know if I'd call that a cat yet. That is just a stuffed animal. I love the shuffling dance though, <laughs> that's hilarious. Anyway. 
Yeah, 56 months. That's the upper limit. Uh, uh, OctoJ, my mod, is is one of the uh, the first. He, he wanted to be the first person to sub, and he explicitly told me that. And so when I got the email from Twitch, I let him know, and he subbed. So he's he's the the, the longest sub. I unsub if you shave. I've threatened to do that before, just for the shock value. Schmeid with 46. Yeah, Schmeid's been around for a while too. Yeah, I have threatened to shave just for the drama, but it'll take like, it took, I think it took the better part of two years for me to get the beard. So I need to trim and get a haircut and do all that stuff. So that'll be a shock value thing. <laughs> I'd at least get one sub if I stream because of my beard. A, a lot of the people I know have giant scraggly beards, not IRL friends. All my internet friends have giant scraggly beards. I don't do scraggly. I need to I need to undo the scraggly. I'm a little I'm looking a little disheveled now. I feel like I've uh, I've been in the woods for a while. Yeah, if I do a full like not even eyebrow, just eyebrows and everything. I don't think I'll get eyebrows back. People often talk about how like I, I don't know. People people have said I've singed my eyebrows just because of all of the explosives work that I've done. But <laughs> Shelly says, uh, St. Wiggly's dog I looked after for a weekend and it was the most exhausting thing I've ever done. She's a golden retriever puppy who stealth poops. Um, there was a time when I, you know, I was, I was with my folks and my dad and I were talking in the morning and Jelly was doing a zoomie from one, from the fireplace to a sliding door. And it's, a, it's not a very large area, but she was going back and forth like this. And we, my dad and I were like, haha, very funny. We turn our heads to, to look at each other for a moment and look back and there's a log by the fireplace. Uh, uh, not the type of log that you typically put in the fireplace. <laughs> she's more chill now. Yeah, she's a puppy who's in a teenager's body and she's rambunctious. She was a lot of fun to look after, but it was funny how she would sneak poops. We didn't know what the formula was to get her to poop, and it turns out you leave her alone and she'll poop. <laughs> She's adorable. She's a great puppy. A big, goofy golden retriever. All right, what do we got here? So I've rearranged my windows a little bit. This is the new programming window, which means I get to look up at the monitor and it's more natural. It also means that chat is right here. Look at them, filthy. Uh, Got all that filth up on that screen. And then when I want to look at the other monitor to see the video window, I'm looking at a weird spot. So what I need to do is, where's that scene? Oh man, I got a scroll wheel in order to see all my scenes now. I need to fix that. Uh, scroll wheel is, is not, it's not good to have more scenes than your OBS can display. I need to clean off this surface here and I need to mount the other, other monitor arm pretty much next to this one just on this desk, and then I'll have another monitor here. Hopefully it'll hang above, well, this thing, the miniature Arbor Press that St. Wiggly and I got from a random uh, estate sale. It's working as a counterbalance for my microscope. So I don't know if I, I'll need to rearrange where that is. I'm not happy about that because I really like my microscope setup. Put yourself in the bottom right so it looks like you're looking up at the code. Yeah, that's true. I can rearrange those. If I'm looking, if it looks like, cause I don't see, I don't see what the video output is when I'm looking at this thing. Like this? Yeah, it does look like I'm looking. Okay, yeah. What if we do, I can move chat all the way on top and put myself all the way at the bottom. This, by the way, what you're listening to right now is Radioactive Sandwich, which is friends of mine. You can find them by looking up radio. Why is, why is Chatty not? Oh, I minimized Chatty, that's why. Um, Julian has a side project. I think there's still, there's still a thing, but I don't know what the status is really. I haven't explicitly asked Julian. I think Lauren, uh, the other slice of radioactive sandwiches, is, is probably a little busy, but uh, Julian's doing his own thing. You know, that's we built him a Norn, which was a lot of fun. This needs to expand a little bit. 
Ugh, means I need to change that length in order to make it. I was doing this before stream, but we'll do a little bit right now. So that width needs to change. I mean, I could just crop it. You could use alt. Yeah, that's a little easier to do. Go. But I want to get... <clears throat> Hold on. Bleh. I ate uh, some weird... Oh no, I missed the train, says Twitch. Thank you guys for the subs at the beginning of stream, by the way. I really appreciate all that. Um, I want to get Julian on the show again. And we don't have a project. I just want to get him on the show. So I don't know. I don't know. We, we, might, uh, we might just get him on the show for no reason at all. I'm allowed to do stuff like that. It's my show. Ah! <laughs> Shut up! Don't you come on my fucking hair. <laughs> shut the fuck up, chat. <laughs> you, sh you shut your fucking mouth. Alright, so like that. That's where I'd be looking. Does that look right? Probably looks right. Hold on. Google's going to have a hell of a time figuring out who I am. No! No! Ugh. <laughs> I don't know if you, you guys didn't see that, did you? I don't, I don't know. I hate my hair, okay? I haven't had time to go to the barber. I don't know if they take walk-ins, because I'm not organized or scheduled enough to actually figure out how to schedule a haircut. No, get, get the face out of there. There we go. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Oh yeah, that worked great. Let's put one on that. I hate to have, I, I don't like to have the clear thing behind chat. I don't like that. Oh, there's John Kilo. I mentioned just a minute ago that he was my oldest follow. He's too cool to sub, though, which is a little shitty. I'm just kidding. I I, I don't mean to. I don't want to. I'm just sub shaming as a joke. I don't do that. I don't do that. What's up, Lucas? Channel 32. Channel four or channel three? Anybody who knows how to answer that is a boomer like me. Channel four or channel three? What kind of a household were you? Copy that, and then we go to this one. I need to move this. Hold on, there we go. That's a little better. Uh, you were a four. I, we were. I, I feel like our area was a four. Uh oh, beeping. <sighs> Beep boop bop. I need to give insulin for the taco salad that I made today. Cartoon Network was on thirty-seven. I feel like that three was CBS. Was it? 
I don't remember three. I think we didn't have a three or a four in Philadelphia. It was it, like three or four was nothing. BBC One. All right, so, so, so there's a little international issue there. Um, the, uh, what I'm getting at for those those Zoomers who don't really know is that three or four, it was, that was the channel that we could um, put our video games on because you had to have something that made the video signal into RF. It had to look like a TV channel. So you had a little gray box with a selector switch on it that would put you on three or four. What's up, Pyro? Wait, there are decimal place channels? Well, all that, all that space nowadays is, it's, it's cell phones. It's all cell phones. We had an antenna twister in the attic. So we had to take this dial and move it. And then the antenna twister would move it into that position. All right, I was putting a, a backing on you guys. John Kilo, you didn't have to do that. Thank you for the, the six months of tier ones. I appreciate that. Saying, uh, I am not too cool. Yeah, I was the little brother. So I was actually, I was actually the remote control before the infrared remote control uh, existed. Where'd my color source go? There it is. Low tech, thank you for the prime. Wow, we got a lot of subs today. I don't even have burn the subs working. I'm hoping that we can get some progress into fixing this button presser. I know it's been, it's been really frustrating because I haven't been able to make progress on this thing. Um, we will be able to make progress today, I believe. I believe, I have faith. I have little faith, I have some faith. <laughs> I have a little, I have a little faith, just a little bit. Just like that much, just like a little tiny bit of faith that we'll be able to make some progress on this. Because once we do, I, I can spend a couple streams playing My Summer Car. I wanna do that, I wanna do, I wanna pivot and do some My Summer Car streams and then we'll get into doing, um, Burn the Subs, the thing behind me. There's a lot of stuff we need to do with Burn the Subs. And a lot of it's programming, unfortunately, but we need to make the control panel again. Now that we've got it, we're using a different controller. We're using a, a, a 3D printer controller in order to make burn the subs work. Uh, and we need to use the API uh, that exists within Clipper in order to send it G code, I guess. We're still gonna be using G code. So we need to cater all of our Python Raspberry Pi scripts in order to send the right stuff. And I need to make a program for the Raspberry Pi portion of the, of the, uh, uh, what do you call it? <laughs> for our code, the burn the subs code, I need to make a program, like a new program that will let me use a joystick in order to plot out where the, where the edges of live edge board are. So it knows what its boundaries are. My winter car is announced, but it's still one developer. But apparently you're gonna have to, ca you have a kid that you have to take care of. I don't want that in my summer car. That's gonna be crazy. I wonder if you could just let the kid die like immediately and then go <laughs> do a bunch of other stuff. Yeah, things, technically it's a thingy and that's a professional term. That thing right there, is a, it's a solution looking for a product. This is something that St. Wiggly left here. And it's a Windows 7 computer. This is a Windows 7 computer that's meant for industrial applications. I think it was, I think it belonged to Pico Energy because it has a Pico Energy, it's, it's got a sticker that says PCO on it. So I think that's a Pico Energy and it's, it's meant to control like, it's meant to go in like a controls cabinet. Yeah, this is in the box. It's like it's like a like a multi thousand dollar, really obsolete computer. <laughs> it's a it's an a fully air cooled. It doesn't have any fans, and it's a Windows Seven computer. There's like the top of it comes off, and there's a hard drive in that. Um, but it's meant to go in like a twenty four volt controls cabinet, uh, and I guess be remotely accessible and control stuff. Maybe maybe this is the part that Pico Energy s switched out in order to make my power now reliable. Now that we spent all of the, we went through all of the expenses uh, to get a generator here so that our, our power wouldn't, you know, fucking die for a week. 
So we have a generator now, and they probably, this is probably the arbiter of, of me never losing power again as they swap that thing out for something that's reliable. Top of the line on the factory floor. Well, I mean, you know, with, with industrial stuff, you have to consider what is reliable. What is reliable and what isn't? Is the music still too loud? It's probably a little too loud. Uh, what is reliable? You know, and, and so an operating system like Windows 10 isn't reliable. There's still stuff that they need to vet out with it. So they need to wait until it becomes sort of like vetted and solid. The Windows 98, mm, Windows 7, yeah, sure. XP would probably be what you'd want on a more modern one. And then Windows 10, I, I don't know, man. Windows 10 is a bunch of stuff that's scary for an industrial setup, like uh, updates that get pushed. I think the industrial version of Windows doesn't have those, those updates that get pushed to it though. So. Yeah, St. Wiggly, by the way, if you guys didn't know out there, all 12 of you watching me right now, um, St. Wiggly is one of the sources of all of the interesting junk that I have around here. <laughs> Believe it or not, He's incredibly good at sourcing very interesting stuff. That linear actuator that we have is, is due to him. Yeah, 7 and 10 XP is no longer supported. I was working for the government when they finally said Windows 7 is okay. And, and then the same week, Microsoft went, Windows 7 is no longer supported. <laughs> it's like, oh. What's the main advantage of Windows over Linux for industrial applications? Absolutely not. None. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Nothing. Support, maybe, but support's been cut off, so I don't know. I don't know. There's probably no advantage at all. <laughs> Bought five Raspberry Pi Pico. That sounds cool. I have some of the um, microcontroller Raspberry Pis around here. Security updates. Yeah, I don't know what Linux is like for what what that's like for security updates. Linux will just work on everything. It'll just inherently work on everything, except if you have something that's so weird like that, perhaps Linux doesn't quite work for it. We could try to, to Linus that thing. I mean, it's like, why would I use this over a Raspberry Pi for my application? So I'm doing weird hobby stuff. I'm not doing like professional industrial stuff. I'm taking professional industrial equipment and I'm hacking into it. So there's no real reason for me to be using something like this. But that thing is so interesting that I want to find an application for it. I could host Winamp on it. <laughs> I could make it into a, uh, oh no, that, that requires graphics card stuff, doesn't it? Milk Drop. Because I had Milk Drop running Pipeline, which went to a pixel pusher which ran LED strips. And I would love to do that with this back wall here because then I could run trippy patterns on it that look good on spaced out LEDs. You need to kind of cater what Milk Drop plugins run on it. When you get it right, it looks really good because there are like crisp patterns that you can glean off of multiple strips of LEDs if you make, you know, if you cater it correctly, if you look for the right stuff. Um, and I've done that before. I did it with a washers game that went on a festival. Um, with four or five LED strips and they, they looked beautiful and you could have it respond to stuff. So if we get a follow, I could have something cool happen. But I need to, I need to learn what the new stuff is for LED control on multiple LED strips. Um, FK Productions, AKA John in, in the city, a buddy of mine is pushing. Um, the reason I said all that was that I was hoping that I remember what the program was called. Touch designer? Is that it? It's like it's like touch you in a naughty place program. I don't know what it is. I think it's touch designer. It's like it, it you you put like programming blocks together in order to do visual stuff. And so apparently um, that's really good for making like interactive displays and like LED art pieces and museum pieces and stuff like that. So that may be something that I have to get into. I may have to get into that in order to make a cool LED wall that that responds to cool stuff. Because he had. They had a, on the wall of their shop, in their meeting room, um, not in their shop, in their, in their meeting room, they have, the, they have a whole thing, it's fucking awesome. But they have, a, they have this big, uh, like, welded USA map with a bunch of LEDs behind it. And um, that thing ran, like, weather data. Really cool. How are you doing today, Bother? I got 12 hours of sleep. I got 12 entire, I, I went to bed very early. Like, the sun was up early. Um, and I slept, 
late. I wanted to have more morning time, but apparently the time when I wanted to wake up, my body skipped. So I'm feeling a little groggy, but I'm actually quite good today. <laughs> I actually got enough sleep, believe it or not. I've been talking with Julian. Oh God, oh, it's all a mess. It's all a mess. All of my windows are all over the place. I've been talking with Julian of Radioactive Sandwich. I want to get him in here for a stream. I really do. We got to make sure our schedules line up and then we don't really have a project. We don't really have a project. I got three hours in a sweaty wake up. Well, that, the reason that I slept so long is because I got three hours the night before and I need to fix my, my schedule. So I've been working on that. Well, thank you guys for all the, the hype trains and stuff. I really appreciate it. A lot of old, he old names coming up, bubbling up, percolating up to the top and, and subbing to my channel. I, I appreciate that. I feel my popularity is starting to wane and it has kind of a mental toll when you're streaming. Stonks are supposed to go up, but they're not. And that's because we haven't been doing Burn the Subs. Burn the Subs has brought a lot of people into this channel. And it, you know, gives them a little incentive. Just a little tiny bit of incentive goes a long way when you're streaming. So, uh, you know, I'm not cool enough to just thank people. <laughs> I need to actually do something with their name. So we're gonna, we're gonna work on that next. Uh, but today, today we're rooting out bugs. We're trying to figure out what's wrong with my program. I have done an extensive amount of work to get all the functionality in. Now that we've had the, and, and keep in mind, this is not a Sele Logic device. It emulates one, but it's not a Sele Logic device. I am not taking Sele Logic's lunch from them, right? I'm not doing that. They sell a thousand or $500 or $1,500 Logic Analyzer that has its own suite of software tools. We're not doing that. We are working with open source software tools that run a logic analyzer that's cheap, that happens to pretend to be a CLA logic device. That's what I'm doing. So I'm not taking anybody's lunch. I had somebody in Discord uh, be like, please, please, if you can afford it, just, just buy the CLA logic device. No, I'm not gonna do that because I'm not, I'm not actually taking anything from CLA. If you want professional logic analyzation, and you want really nice data, and you want a suite of software that does a shitload of stuff, yeah, yeah, spend the money. I don't have the money, but also I don't need to. I'm, I'm spending money on things that are cheaper and, and functional enough for me to get this job done. Yeah, uh, well, I've already I've already gotten it working. I, I sent, I sent, I sent the, uh, the thing. The, the Amazon comment about how to get it working with those tools with Z or Z Diag and the other thing. We did that last week. Last week, we actually looked at the logic analyzer output. I'm just trying to give a little context here. Let's just start the stream. Eh. And then I need to, uh, I need to just like subtly fade out the music so that nobody notices that it stopped. I gotta fire the person in the booth. <sighs> yeah, let me let me re-explain what we're doing today. So I've spent most of the weekend. Yeah, in the last stream, I went over how to get that device working. There's also a tutorial that I posted. Hold on, let's let's start over. So um, what we're doing today is we're going through the code. We're going through the code that I wrote over the weekend to try to get um, the lot or the. <laughs> to try to pretend to be a Bluetooth low energy device. I have this simulator set up and it consists of a bunch of different parts. A lot of really cool stuff is going on here. Uh, this all spawned out of my need to beat Rabaz at my summer car. He's playing my summer car right now. So I don't, I won't fault you if you go watch Rabaz right now because it's always fun when he plays my summer car. His save file is an absolute fucking mess. It's great. Um, in my save file, however, in my summer car, I've actually uh, made my car look like an old school. Uh... What is the car? What is the Satsuma? What's the real world equivalent of the Satsuma? Anyway, whatever, whatever car that is has a legendary race team. And I've made my car look like that. I spent a lot of time in GIMP, which I was talking to my diabetes doctor yesterday. 
and there there's like a tool for sharing glucose levels and stuff and it's called like the pit or something like that like these open source software people make the worst names they really can't name stuff because you're like yeah i'll edit that let me go get gimp and it's like you, you, wait what are you getting wait you, you can you run that by me again what are you doing you pervert you're like no 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 no. that's just what uh gnu image manipulation program it's actually it's actually totally innocent that they called it that they called it that they called their software suite gimp they're like yeah let me let me call my software suite gimp come on man i would say come on i shouldn't say come on man or come on guys because that implies things when you're talking about anyway uh so I, I did a lot of extensive editing in GIMP. In GIMP. I edited my GIMP. Stop it! Stop it! Get it out of your head! Uh, anyway, so I, I, I made my car, I, I catered the textures in the car to look like a legendary uh, race car. And, and then I put all kinds of brands on it for the stickers, and they're all within my summer car. And I couldn't help to put a Minion sticker on it. But anyway, so my summer car. I was playing my summer car and I was like, man, this would be a lot easier with a wheel. What's like a good wheel? What can I get? And so I'm looking up stuff and I'm like, nah, Logitech wheels and stuff like that. They're kind of expensive. Hold on, what's this? Direct drive. Why that's neat. What do you do with the direct drive steering wheel? Oh, it looks like the electricity goes directly into the only moving part, which is the wheel and the spindle of the motor. I was like, oh, that's cool. I wonder how much a direct drive wheel costs. Oh my God, they're really expensive. They're like thousands of dollars. Now I shouldn't talk because this thing is racked up in the expenses over the years, but this is this is before I even started streaming. So we know by the, the subs at the beginning of the stream, these these kind people, where did my, oh, the backing window is still there, yeah. Um, these, these very kind people have been subbing to me like mad uh, at the beginning of the stream. We saw numbers upwards of 56 months in there. Uh, they've been subbing for a long time. Well, this wheel started before that, and I sort of looked at the open wheel project a little bit, and then I discovered that Granite Devices, the company where I bought this sort of Swiss knife of motor controllers that could control almost any, any three-phase motor that's within the power levels of the device, uh, I bought some stuff from them, and I discovered that they had sort of this open wheel project uh, spinoff called the Simu Cube, and the Simu Cube uses their little motor driver cards, and you can configure them with the uh, properties of your three-phase motor to control just about anything, which is cool because eBay exists. You see, industrial motors have a lifespan. They have a given lifespan, and the people who are running these industrial motors are very keenly aware of what that lifespan is, because when that expires, you don't want your motor to break while it's actually performing a function on the factory line. Everything stops and explodes, and maybe you maybe you end up on that uh, web on that YouTube channel where factories explode and they do recreations, right? You don't want to you don't want to end up on that government agency web that that YouTube channel. By the way, is one of the best ones out there. But uh, and their funding gets constantly cut. Anyway, they have this buttery smooth like Winnie the Pooh style voice uh, voiceover. It's it's just Bah, it's chef's kiss. Um, anyway, so uh, hopefully somebody will mention it in the chat because I don't remember the, the acronym, like the CCWB or whatever. <laughs> um, all right, anyway, so, so factories swap out parts at an interval, right? So they'll swap out the motors at an interval and do a little maintenance on their, on their stuff. Well, when that happens, the old motors are worth something. So they're like, yeah, that's worth something. Put it on a shelf. And they forget about it. And somebody rolls around, and then it vanishes from the shelf. And it turns up on eBay. And then people like me are able to buy a motor like this. I, I thought it was like accident investigation or something like that. Yeah, maybe it is chemical. US CSB, there we go. US Consumer Safety Board? Or Chemical Safety Board. Yeah, USCSB, it's one of the coolest channels on eBay. Wait, on, on YouTube. Um, it is chemical, okay. Well, anyway, so, so because of the phenomenon of motors going out of service life, I am able to buy one generation behind of a motor that is two horsepowers and direct drive and is of extremely high quality. This is a Mitsubishi Servo. 
I was able to get it running. We had to swap out the encoder because Mitsubishi is very close. Well, most of these are very closed system. They say, here's our servo. It uses this encoder. It only speaks Mitsubishi language. So instead of reverse engineering the encoder, we went and uh, just replaced it. Uh, There's a Canadian company that makes uh, capacitive sensors and they're universal. So we were able to pop the old one off, which is worth $300 if you look up eBay auctions that have completed. Um, I haven't sold it, but you can pop all that stuff off and you can pop on your own capacitive encoder. And so now we can communicate with the SimuCube base station. That's cool. And I was able to hop on eBay as well and find some, I don't know, f foreign European person that refurbishes actual car steering wheels. So part of the other goal was that I want my driving uh, interface to feel like driving a real car as much as I can manage because I'm comfortable with car controls and they can take a little bit of abuse. So I can actually drive like I'm driving a luxury car. It's not, it's not because, don't, don't be fooled, don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. I'm not good at driving. I guess I'm okay at driving. Statistically, I am in the upper percentages of, of skilled drivers, but I'm not good at driving. I'm not good at driving. I'm not a race car driver. I'm not a, I'm not a racist, chat. Um, I'm, I'm not a race car driver. I like driving and I like being comfortable. Those are two of the, my two tenets in life. That's like, that's like the, the primary, like the pillars of a bother. I like being comfortable. So I bought a luxury car steering wheel and I bought it primarily because it has paddles. It has paddles. These little paddles I can use for shifting if I want to try to be a racist. I mean, race car driver. Why do I keep confusing that? If I want to be a race car driver, I can use the paddles. I, it also has a bunch of buttons on the front, which I could use to control other car things. And so I thought that was really fun. So we took a look at the steering wheel and we figured out that in order to get the identity of the buttons pressed, we needed to communicate with this thing via something called the Lin bus. Now don't be fooled, it's not a BMW. Dumb people come in here and ask why I have a BMW wheel. This is, no BMW has ever had this wheel. This is a Mercedes S-Class wheel. The BMW cover is just because I happen to have the original wheel for the car project was a BMW wheel. I swapped it out of my, um, my, uh, uh, what do you call it? My sport, my ZHP, the E46 Sport Edition 330i that was about to rust itself in half. I sold, but I didn't sell it with the M wheel. I swapped out the M wheel for another wheel. And then I put my M wheel into my E39 station wagon in order to update the interior a little bit, make it feel really nice to drive. I'm actually really happy with that. Um, so I have the E39 wheel sitting, it's hanging up on stuff in the, in the shop. But anyway, in the process of that, I netted myself an extra airbag, uh, extra airbag. And, uh, so I took it apart and I got rid of the detonators in it. Cause I'm not really that comfortable with a lot of detonators sitting around the shop. So I had this cover sitting around for that, for the, the M wheel of the wrong car. Uh, and so I just plopped it in here because it was something to cover this giant airbag hole. If I wanted to get a Mercedes S-Class airbag, it would be like $300. I'm not doing that. So anyway, uh, we tried to do a bunch of computer modeling and, so that I could 3D print something to fit in there. We'll have to revisit that because I think I can just guess <laughs> some of the properties of this thing. I can just guess or use photogrammetry in order to try to figure out how to make a cover. And then we can make just like a cool little cover for this thing that I can then feel good about but uh we're not there we're not there yet anyway so um real car parts in the lin bus i wanted to make everything else in the in the car interface with that interface because we're making that interface for the interface of the interface of the oh god i'm stuck um so anyway i made lin accessories lin bus accessories out of the shifter and out of the pedals which are e46 no e e E something like 92. They're like E92 uh, pedals that we actually were able to make into Lin bus stuff. Um, the shifter was originally a Steptronic shifter, but when we played My Summer Car with that, I was terrible at it. I didn't know which direction was up or down and I couldn't get it straight. And my unwillingness to learn it made us actually go out and venture out to Thingiverse and find a uh, shifter that we could, we could print. So given all of that, I've now got all the buttons on here, all the buttons on there, and then three analog inputs, right? So all that stuff is going through the LIN bus and it's going to our own microcontroller over here, right? 
And that microcontroller controls a port expander because Granite Devices didn't think that any of the meat-headed racers, racers, man, that's that's more clunky to say than my other word for it. Um, all the meat-headed racers can't, all the pit builders that are that have one brain cell in between all of them can't figure out how to digitally manipulate uh, switches and stuff. So they have a bunch of Ethernet connectors that go into their device, and those Ethernet connectors are just a simple on-off switch to ground. Well, that's all well and good and, and tidy and fun, but it doesn't have enough inputs for all the buttons that we have. But it does have enough inputs for all the buttons that we have. In fact, it has a Bluetooth low energy system that can get registered in with this thing. And so you can put a little wireless wheel module into your steering wheel. Well, that's not gonna work for us because we've done all this work to get all this stuff in here. We've done all this work to get all this stuff in here. And this thing speaks Linbus and it multiplexes the buttons. All the buttons are multiplexed which means I'd have to have another microcontroller that would then work off of a battery and multiplex the buttons. We weren't able to figure out it out when we tried. They were, the banks were all weird and stuff. The Germans are drunk. I don't know what they're doing with electronics. German electronics are like the weirdest fucking thing I've ever encountered in my entire life. And I don't know why. They're so weird. We looked at that shifter over there and that shifter over there looks like it used to use actual switches. And then in like a weekend, they redesigned the board in order to, to use Hall effect sensors. But since the switches were SPDT, no, single throw dual pull, SPDT switches, they had to replicate SPDT switches. No, they were DPDT switches, dual pull, dual throw. That's like two, two switches in one. What, and, and the problem is one of them went from normally closed to normally open. One of them went from normally open to normally closed when they were thrown. They're two separate switches, opposite sides. And so they're like, how do we do this? And sorry, they went, how do we do this? That's a shitty German accent. I'm sorry, Germans. I'm sorry. Uh, you guys are on the chopping block right now. Um, they, they redesigned this board in like a weekend. It looks like two people who were like having like a fucking Digimon battle were designing the board at the same time. They were like fighting like in hackers with the videotapes. Um, so they eventually redesigned this board and it contained two different sensors for each position of the shifter that would basically replicate the functionality. It replicated the functionality perfectly fine. In terms of the, the service life of the Steptronic system in the E46, that one part that we have is the most reliable. <laughs> Believe it or not, I don't know why. But anyway, we, we got to the bottom of all this stuff and we got it all speaking Linbus and we got all the Linbus stuff speaking to this board by using a port expander in order to directly throw switches and buttons on that thing. Ran out of button positions. And so in order to get all of this stuff up and functioning, we need more buttons. So I bought the wireless wheel module, but instead of actually using it as a low energy Bluetooth module, Instead of, yeah, the, I, put the, I put the tape on here because it's really reflective. The cameras hate it. This is a, a very high wattage 48 volt industrial power supply. Um, I wonder if I could get something smaller than that. This is expensive though. That was an expensive part. But it takes up so much room in my system. By the way, the laser case for this stuff is thanks to FK Productions. <laughs> it's actually thanks to FK Productions. Uh, they, they had a, one of their, their cutting lasers uh, shit the bed. And so they had this whole broken cutting laser. And I took a look at it and I'm like, I, I can't fit that in my shop. Like my shop is like a closet. I can't fit that much stuff in it. Even as an art piece on the wall, as cool as it would be to like clean it up and put some LEDs on it and maybe run some fancy looking water through it. it it's just too big. It's like the, the whole size of a whole wall. So anyway, the case, the case is from a laser power supply. Yeah, the case didn't come with it. It's a, uh, it's, it's another, it's another, I live in the space where all industrial warehouses throw out their junk. <laughs> I'm basically, we don't have any good, good, like scrap yards around here. That's basically what my shop is. So anyway, um, we got the Linbus stuff using a port expander, flipping the buttons. We're out of buttons. This thing enables more buttons. It's expensive. And I bought one. I'm not going to use it with this thing. Cause it doesn't really interface all that cleanly. I guess that would have been where the smart money is. That would have been the faster way to do it because then the shifter would have plugged into the ethernet and the pedals would have plugged into the ethernet. Oh, well, uh, we had to do things the hard way. And so what we're doing is we're trying to reverse engineer. It sounds like where I work. Well, you're not that far away from me. Um, so 
this thing is the receiver. I, I, you can't really say receiver. Both of these are transceivers because they go both ways. Um, you know, trans people are people too. Anyway, so they're transceivers. They, they communicate back and forth with one another. And what happens is this thing communicates with the base station via a serial interface. Well, we can do serial interfaces. We know serial. That's easy to do. It's ones and zeros. How hard can it be? Well, it turns out it's fucking ridiculously complicated. There's an API for it, though. So using the API, I have been fighting tooth and nail to put together something that emulates this module and this module to the base station. So as the base station asks it to do stuff, it responds in kind with proper signaling to make the base station think that this thing is connected to this thing and that this thing is sending button presses back to it. We're most of the way there. We originally used this thing on the oscilloscope and we manually decoded ones and zeros. We moved on to making an Arduino work as a, as a signal interpreter, interpolator, interpreter. Um, and that thing was able to spit out packets, but it missed some stuff. So I bought this $14 logic analyzer and I'm using, what is it called? Hold on. The program that I'm using is called PulseView. And if you, if you buy one of these things, there's like an Amazon link for it somewhere. Chester might still have it. Um, this thing uses Pulse Analyzer. It's a program that's open source and does logic analysis. Um, and this thing basically pretends to be a Sele logic device, even though it's not. It's just what they made it pretend to do. Um, I'm, not, I'm not stealing Sele logic's lunch. Somebody in Discord thought I was. And they said, hey, if you, can, if you can manage to afford it at all, you should buy the real Sele Logic device. Well, no, because Sele Logic, they sell a very nice piece of hardware, but it has absolutely no appeal to something like me, to somebody like me, and to people like you. Um, don't have a link. All right, well, if anybody's interested, they can contact the Discord <laughs> and ask about it. But, like, I'm not stealing anybody's lunch. This is just an offshoot device. You know, it's it maybe it's possible that this thing fakes being a Sele Logic device and you can use Sele Logic software with it. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. If I if I need the functionality of a Sele Logic device, the incredible circuit design that they do and the design that they put into it and whatever functionality their program has, then I will fork out the fifteen hundred a thousand dollars fifty percent off for hobbyists. I will do that. I'll buy it, but I don't need to. Because we've, technologically, we don't need $1,000 devices to do this stuff anymore. So anyway, this little, this little piece of shit logic analyzer is amazing. Um, this thing cracked the code, so to speak. And it was able to get all of the digital signals that are running around on this thing. And it was able to decode all of them. So I made a master document about how this thing comes up to speed. And I catered my code to it. My code's gotten ridiculously complicated. So um, I'm, oh boy. I am not going to be able to explain a whole hell of a lot about how my code works. You guys can take a look at it in its almost, almost to the state that it's in right now um, on the Discord. I've posted basically everything on the Discord, and you guys can see how it's all organized. Weird having my face cam so low on the, on the display. I have to look way down to see what it looks like. Um, so you guys can see the code. It's on the Discord. You guys can go check it out. But uh, for now, we need to vet out what is going on with this thing. So what I'm going to do to start off the stream, I need to just, okay. Start off the stream, I'm going to upload this code to the Arduino here, right there. My eyes go to the wrong place in order to do all the production stuff now. I have to reorganize my monitors, chat. It's, it's kind of a mess, but I'll, I'll get there. Yeah, it's it's easy to find the clones and and, and the Amazon uh, listing has all the all the stuff for it. And you can ask you can ask in the Discord and we'll answer. Uh, all right. So my code. How do I put this succinctly? My code works on a pair of state machines. What's happening is one one function pulls the serial signals off of the serial line and loads it into a buffer. And when there's a, a serial line in the buffer, it's thrown into the state machine that looks at the command and the class. Those are the two ways. 
it's basically a, a two things because there's more than there's more than however many numbers hex can handle um so they they use two two bytes or they use a whole byte in order to no two bytes in order to define what the commands are they have classes and they have uh ids and so i throw them together and i make what what i call a clid and that clid goes through a big state machine that identifies the different the different uh things that should be performed and so everything is performed within this clid all of the interactions that the packet has when it receives it there's a direct response and then there are events that are triggered sometimes so that's what all this code is it's trying to vet out what the responses are and then what the events are that are triggered and so i have an engine running i call them an en i call it an engine because it's um it's basically at a certain time interval everything in this stack is moved to the next position and the first thing in the stack is performed by the microcontroller. So we have signals that need to be sent out, but they are agnostic of wherever the loop is. They don't care where the loop is. When the loop gets to them, they perform the function and then everything moves up a tick. Um, that's, I call it an engine because it's churning. It, 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 it keeps doing stuff, right? So if stuff happens in the background, it's not interrupted. Okay, so, uh, oh boy. How do I even get into this with you guys? I'm trying. I'm gonna try to work quickly today because we we've only got a couple things that need to be vetted out, and we need to kind of figure out how we're going to clean up this code. Now, in the in the Discord, Chester Willard actually suggested that I use uh, what is it, mem something or other, in order to do sort of lower level C code uh, comparisons of an entire string. And I thought that was a good idea. And then I went to bed and I slept for 12 hours. And I woke up and I said, you know what? The two device addresses are so unique and we have so few of them. We only have two device addresses and, and one of them is the funny joke sex number. We could just take one byte. Cause I mean, if we take 84, for instance, there are not too many places that we're gonna find eight four in just a serial signal. What? Who was it then? Who told me to do that? Oh, it was Cannibal Jesus. Sorry. Sorry. I don't have a favorite chat member. <laughs> I don't remember anybody. Yeah, funny sex number we used for our test case. We're not doing device two right now. Um, when I get into device two, I need to have types. And types are just beyond my program. For right now, I don't have the mental acuity. We have exactly 24 buttons in the system. So we will be maxing out one button register, which is fine, <laughs> which is fine. We'll max out the one button register. We'll be good. We'll be good to go. <sighs> I still need to work on the Linux or sorry, the Linux, the Linbus code into this stuff, into this stuff. Um, all that stuff over there. I don't know. The Linbus should hopefully um, exist within a function. That'll probably be my Wednesday. And if, if I succeed, we're just going to play games on Thursday. <laughs> We're just going to play games on Thursday. I was thinking about Thursday, like what we could do. And I had kind of like a good idea for like a little project that we could do. Um, aside from the keys. I forgot what it was. <laughs> I don't remember what it was. There's a product that I want to buy. An OBS, OBD product that I want to buy that we can do a stream on. But then I'll just be directly copying like another content creator. And I don't want to do that. So. At what point does it get complicated enough to warrant an OS? <laughs> look at uh this is just for organization all the tabs arduino throws all the tabs together as one giant file so um man i don't i don't actually know but anyway anyway um yeah we're gonna just look for 1d and we're just gonna look for 69 giggity we only have to look at 1D for now. So let me go back to where I was working, which I barely remember. So we can get rid of the for loops. These were, so <laughs> if you want to know how cursed my thought train was, basically what happens is we get a command and it says, hey, connect to this device. And it gives us an address, right? And we were stuck here. I was stuck here yesterday. I got stuck here. Everything came all the way up to command gap connect, right? Where is that? 
Mm, this isn't the right one. Yeah. Either way, uh, you can imagine. Just use your use your mind's eye. Uh, <laughs> just imagine what this says is that after the first scan response, it says, "Hey, connect to this device," and then I error out, and then things just resume. It just went back to being cursed. So we had a little bit of a problem. Um, I don't know why it was erroring out. I don't care to know exactly. I, I looked at this one block of code and I went, absolutely not. Absolutely not. No way. I don't know why I had this. This needs to be. Um, what happened was so the way that I thought that this was going to work. Now, keep in mind, this is wrong. This is wrong. I need to have like sirens blaring and stuff. This is not how it works. This doesn't work like this. This is just how I thought it would work. So for zero to five, what we're doing is we're looking at the location of the input buffer because the command contains the Bluetooth address that it wants to connect to. And it's saying, uh, hey, what if uh, this is like this device address? And if any of these aren't like that device address, we break out of this thing. And supposedly I thought I was breaking out of everything else, right? So we break out of this and we don't make handle is equal to handle one. If any of them fail, we don't do that. We go here and we scan this one to see if it's handle two. But if the handle is equal to anything other than one or two, we, we throw an error and then we break. That's not really how this works. <laughs> I don't know why I was putting breaks in here. I must've been really tired when I coded this. This is cursed. So what I need to do is we're just gonna get rid of the for loops because we know that our address is unique enough. So we're gonna do if input buffer of blah 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 is equal to device address, yeah, 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 is equal to device address one, and we're just gonna take the first one else. And we're gonna use else statements so that we don't have to worry about, damn it, wrong stuff going in. So if the input buffer of, and this is actually according to, where did I hide the API reference? Okay, according to command legap connect, it's low energy and then GAP is like, uh, they don't really define their acronyms in this document. I'm kind of annoyed about that. You can find it somewhere though. Generic access profile, that's, uh, man. Why do I remember that? Well, because I've been fucking swimming in this code for like two weeks. It's ridiculous. So anyway, uh, command low energy generic access profile connect. Eesh. I need to keep an eye on Streamlabs in case anybody donates. I don't see donations on Streamlabs. Um, <laughs> what's up, Smith Clay? Thank you for lurking. Hey, lurkers and VOD watchers, you guys are, are the basically the foundation of the channel you guys you guys do a lot of work around here and i i think i've been negligent in thanking you so thank you uh, thank you for watching I, I really appreciate you guys just hanging out with me and doing all this dumb work that we're doing finding it interesting which i think is a feat in and of itself uh, this has been a, this has been kind of a slog this has been a rough time this happens with projects though not to wax philosophical but when you're working on a project then it's not like fixing a car or it's not like super simple like putting a nail on a board this happens you run into complexity uh of, a, of an order that you didn't expect so anyway um we're getting through it though we're fighting tooth and nail in order to, to get this stuff working so command uh low energy generic access profile connect so i say command leg app connect it's more fun so it sends what we should connect to and it gives an address. Now, it starts at four, zero, one, two, three. According to my code, we load zero, one, two, and three into their own variables. So our buffer starts at four. That's why you'll see a lot of plus fours or, or you know, uh, is less than five, stuff like, you'll see that a lot in my code. Um, so anyway, what we do is we'll take our input buffer of zero and we'll see if it matches our device address of zero. And if it does, let's turn these into zeros. 
Do, 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 do. Then we'll make the handle in this specific uh, loop equal to the handle that it corresponds to. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, no for loops, nothing complicated. And we'll put an else on the end of that. I'm programming these to be compact because they're, they're a little bit too complicated for this code. I should probably make them into functions so that my um, my switch cases are very succinct. That's probably the the super professional, awesome way to do it, but oh well. Can't have everything, chat. And this no longer needs to be that. This can just be an else. Oh, it can just be, eh, should I move that down? I'll move that down. This is getting to be cursed. So if nothing triggers, then we do this. And since there's multiple lines here, we can just allow that to happen. Oh, and then we actually do need to break out of the code, don't we? Because we don't want this stuff to happen. <sighs> do I want to break or do I want to return? If I break early, then I'm not doing this break. That might break it, though. That might be what broke it before. We'll put a break in there. So, input buffer of zero uh, equals now. That's an important one. So if the buffer of zero equals device address of zero, which is this, then we set the handle to equal that handle. Otherwise, if the input buffer of zero is equal to device address two of zero, which is funny sex number, Keep that in mind. Uh, then the handle is equal to handle two. Otherwise, error, clear the packet, get the hell out of here. But if we assign either of these handles, then we come down here and we put the handle and the command into our buffer. So the command is two, then we shift the handle over eight and that goes into the buffer. And then that gets performed later. So what'll happen is um, command leg app connect response. So the command is two, handle is one. So we have 0102. That goes into our transmit thing. When the buffer is triggered, we take the high byte to equal the handle and then the low byte to equal the command. So if the command is, I gotta remind myself because I've already forgotten, two, it's command leg app connect and the handle is passed into the function. So we go over to the command leg app connect. Copy, F, paste, bonk, nope. All the way at the bottom. There we go. We got a bunch of these. Command leg app connect based on the handle. We're going to make our output buffer, which doesn't have the four variables. So we start at zero and we go all the way up to six. What this does, this structure here, while it may be convoluted, while it may be, it, it may kind of like circumvent the uh, traditionals of programming and that you should be programming in order to save yourself uh, repetition. This specifically makes the function mirror the table that we get in the API documentation. So the API documentation is a massive table uh, that gives us all of the stuff that happens. We can mirror that in this, and that allows things to be a little bit more human readable and, and check overable. So we get a positive result code followed by the device handle. And this is the first instance of the device handle. So this is where we're assigning the handle. So the byte handle uh, that we're passing into it there is actually going to be the device's handle. So we could we could make it anything at this point. But anyway, we print out some stuff for the, the human and then we set a status. And that status register, when it fills up, it triggers some more codes that come out because that's how this thing works. It'll send out certain codes at certain times. Now, what we just did should fix it. So I will upload this to the Arduino. Now we need to make sure that the Arduino is connected. Uh, okay, yeah, it is connected. So let's upload, upload that to this device over here. Beep, bop, beep. And that's gonna beep boop its way in. Gotta hide this cable. We're not using thermals today. Uh, is that done? Is that done already? Global variables use 
seven percent of dynamic memory i all this code and i'm using so little memory in this thing 15 percent really i did all this work and it's only 15 percent the only times that i've i've like even remotely approached filling up a tnc 3.2 is when i had a bunch of rgb data in 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 the code all that rgb data was like typed to have uh like giant variables represent rg and b even though even though the actual value was zero to 255 it it was doing like a long <laughs> it was doing this huge variable insane uh that was paul stoffergan's code i think he's fixed it since then but anyway um okay so what we what we've done here is we've retooled the logic and it looks hideous but we can just we can make this traditional we can we can do this the compiler sees it the same way anyway um <laughs> this should hopefully work let's take a look at our serial output over here so serial serial started we get the tx send button packet and so what i'm gonna do what i'm do flip on the device and this would be the uh the whole granite devices controller this thing has gotten so many power on and off events that it's just been absolutely ludicrous over the past over the past month working on this thing all right power on please please aha stop All right, let's interpret what just happened. I don't think I don't think we're hitting buttons yet. Nope. We would have seen. Oh yeah, see, and it's still disappearing. There's something that we have to do here in order to stabilize. Okay, this is the SimuCube software, by the way. This is how we configure the wheel and the wireless wheel and get it to connect. But it's 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 flipping in and out of connectivity, which is something that happened last time, um, and I solved it somehow. I don't know how to solve it again. So let's uh, let's put into our Notepad plus plus, and let's figure out what's going on. I'll power this down. We're getting we're getting there though. We got past our problem. We have we have we have gone past the problem that we had. We connect properly now. So it was that piece of logic that that kept us. Let's put that in here. Let's figure out what happened. So what I have in this document is just the the procedure. It's basically everything this thing does in order to get up and on on the uh, Bluetooth low energy thing. We we interpreted this, and I had to retool this document several times, but we actually got it to to be a functional procedure of events uh, based on the logic analyzer output. So now we're here. Okay, so we're doing we're doing our stuff. Start serial. It mysteriously for some reason it sends a button packet at this point. I don't really know what's triggering that, but it just does it every time. I do not know why. It sends a reset command. Yeah, it's good that yeah, it's good that that was the problem because sometimes weird stuff goes wrong. Tim is absolutely right. Okay, so system reset, system boot, set bondable mode. That's good. There's the command. This basically just says, hey, yeah, thanks. And it, it, it we move on. So set the bondable configuration good. Set hardware soft timer. That sets a timer uh, that it thinks is ID number two. Uh, we make it our timer number zero, even though, yeah, that's fine. So internally, it sets the timer. And then it sends that the software timer has expired. Sends it twice. And then we get a command gap end procedure. We just get this every time. I don't know why it does this. Maybe it assumes that the that the that the base module uh, had a timer set that needs to be stopped just in case. I mean, I guess it's precautionary, but yeah. So it sends that, and we send, "Hey, this is the wrong time for that kind of a command." And then it sends the uh, set soft timer two, uh, which it, uh oh yeah, here we go. Set software timer two. It says, "Yeah, thanks for the command." And then internally, it sets it as two thousand. So we got a four thousand, then a two thousand. This is all part of the procedure. So then the soft timer expires. Then it says set connection parameters. And we say, hey, yeah, thanks, man. There you go. Set timer to SM config. That's security configuration. It says, yeah, sure, we did that. Now, keep in mind, like, this is actually supposed to do stuff within the base module. 
for us, we don't care. <laughs> we don't give a crap. You know, we don't need to set this stuff. I actually think I know what's going on uh, with the with the problem that we're having as I rubber duck you guys. So yeah, hardware soft timer two expires again. And it says, hey, start looking for external Bluetooth devices. I think we can find something here. So we say, yeah, we're gonna start that up. So then soft timer two expires again and the base module goes, oh it, yeah, cancel that timer. I go, all right, cancel. So stop ID2. All right, we're done. Here's a scan response. We found this Bluetooth device that you might be interested in. Usually there's tons of scan responses that come in. For us, it's just one, because we were directly connected. So it says, hey, uh, why don't you connect to that? And we go, all right, let's connect. See, that's the thing we just fixed. So because 1D is unique enough for us, you know, we have all, we have 255 possible addresses here that we can use. So good enough for us. We don't need all this. So we just say uh, 1D. Yeah, we got it. It's not funny sex number. So yeah, we'll connect, we'll connect to that one and assign the handle one. And then we'll say the connection's open. And then we'll say, here are the connection parameters. And then we'll say, here's the fee status, which is confusing, but it's there. This is this command right here, by the way, that was something that we actually missed. We actually missed that command. So then it, it, we, the base station says, hey, end the procedure now. We're like, all right. Then, hey, set these connection parameters. We go, all right. Yeah, cool. Set a soft timer. Okay, we'll set the soft timer. So here's a 2710 timer that we just set. And this is when we get into the regular interval. So as that timer expires, the base station sends back an RSSI request we confirm, and then we reply. And that's all in one, like, block. So it happens again and again and again and again. Then it sends end procedure. Okay, so this is the error. So it said end procedure. We do all the stuff, and then we say, it says end procedure, and we go, we already did. And it keeps going, and then it says end procedure, and we go, bro, what is wrong with you? So it's expecting us to do something. It keeps asking us to end the procedure. So what is not happening here? We need to go through the procedure and see what's going on. So I need to go back to here. And you see these little X's that I put next to the stuff. We need to make sure that all the stuff that X is here needs to be X'd. And I think what's going on is this is probably the wrong number or we are looking at it wrong. There's like some binary stuff that goes on in order to figure out whether or not this is complete because then we send an EVT, we send um, BOF, which is uh, buttons off, parameters to, and then an MTU connect, and we're not sending that. We should be sending that uh, pretty much like here. <laughs> we, pro we probably should be sending that before the transmitted success comes back. Yeah, send connection parameters. Uh, EVT lay connection phi status. So that's like right here is where we should be sending it. So we get that. Okay, so which of these did we get? I think it's I think it's a matter of the wrong binary number that I'm looking at. So we get uh dot 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 dot. Gap scan response, that would be here, and that should trigger that. Gap connect, that's this. Connection opened, that's this. Parameters, that's this. Command set parameters, that's down here. Phi status is right here. End procedure is not part of this. We don't care about that. So we should be sending that and we're not. So let's take a look.
So let's start with whatever's sending this stuff. And that stuff is a function. Print output, send event update, mod state check. That's, that's the, the base station module. The ready connect is where we're doing that. So status one, which is the event register here, is equal to all Fs and ready one is equal to zero, then we set ready one equal to one. Now, I don't, I don't know how much I'm doing with ready one. I've been doing just a comparison for the, the, for the bits, or the, the, the binary thingies. Uh, <laughs> I've just been comparing all of those instead of the ready one register, because this is, this is not as useful as you'd think, because I've got uh, the gat write procedure, which is another complicated thing that we got to get through today. Um, so yeah, let's, let's continue on. I need to, I'm explaining everything in so much detail because uh, I, I like to have you guys be informed about my what I'm doing, but it's so complicated, and I think nobody's following along. Um, you guys don't want to. You don't want to sit here and go through all this kind of. This is this is my problem, not your problem. If status one doesn't equal all Fs and ready one is equal to one, then we reset ready one. Stop. Stop some active timers that control the RSSI and the battery functions going out. I don't really know if we need to do that here, but we're doing it here. If status one is equal to <laughs> this ridiculous fucking number, five nights at Freddy's number, uh, then ready is equal to, and, and ready is equal to zero, because it just is going to be, um, then button packet, zero gets sent. I'm following along. Is this the test? Yeah, you're going to be quizzed on this later. <laughs> I appreciate it that you're following along. Um, so it, I don't know, button packet zero does not exactly, we send a zero button packet, which is this function. Yeah, it's, I, the code is so complicated, I understand, and hopefully we'll be able to boil this down to more interesting, maybe turn it into a couple little parables about, uh, why you shouldn't code like me. Uh, <laughs> that's all I can really come up with right now. God, someday we're going to play Stormworks Search and Rescue, and I'm going to get into Lua coding. We'll get into the same problems again, but this time it'll be for a game and not... This is for a game. Oh, God, what have I done? What is my life? Um, F81F. Well, that's a pretty weird number. F81F. Instead of figuring out what the fuck is going on with this right now, I think what I need to do... Oh man, John Kilo, it takes a little bit of dedication to like learn how to do it, but the way that I learned how to, you know, get to coding like this, I mean, I, I took a college course in C++ and stuff, which is maybe something that would help. Khan Academy has a lot of really good videos, but like to, to get comfortable and, and, and know how to code in the way that I wanted to, I bought an Arduino kit. And I just started fucking around with the Arduino kit in order to get everything, you know, in order to learn how to do this stuff and get kind of a sense of how to how to put stuff together. So that's sort of that's sort of where I am. And that's that's how, you know, I would suggest somebody else learn, but I don't know if it's the best way. Yeah, I hate to have you uh, a captive audience for this kind of stuff, but um, anyway. Our command right here, FNAF, whatever the hell that is, I need, I think what I need to do is serial print that. Yeah, no, the, um, the thing about a coding class is it's not so much about the coding. Coding class isn't about the coding. I know that's a hot take. It's not about the coding. It's about thinking in the way that, that is sort of conducive to coding. You have to learn how the structures act together. And then you work within that structure in order to produce uh, the functionality that you want. And that's, that's sort of how you do it, because you're not going to learn everything from a coding class. Code Academy? I've heard about that. Yeah, I think that's, that might be a good thing. Anyway, um, what, what I want to do is wherever, uh, wherever this thingy is, When we print phi status, let's print out uh, if you code enough, then you no longer are able to function within uh, English grammar and composition. See, so yeah, right here. I was bored with finals and followed some C tutorials instead of studying. 
That's interesting. <laughs> so Phi status. So we go to our transmit engine. I'm gonna find the function that sends, well, I, we could do it here. We could do it within this. So Phi status is way down here. Parameters, Phi status, all right. Uh, we need a printf function, because that's the, printf allows you to add a function to it, and so you can add uh, one of these accursed things. So 04x for hex, um, and that's four digits of hex, and what we are printing is status one, which is a global variable, and that's it. That's all we need to do. Well, I'll add a print serial. It'll be confusing if I don't do a serial print line, just to be nice. Okay, so upload that. See, now that I put together the entire skeleton of the framework of this program, uh, we can we can just alter little things in order to get it up and running again. All right, let's see what we get. And then I'll just copy whatever the, the hell this thing is, and we'll put it in there as our as our status check. Beep pop beep. Okay, stop auto scrolling. F eight two F. Funny that you should mention F82F. All right, turn everything off. Reset the microcontroller. F82F. Oh my god. <laughs> I fucked up. I fucked up, Chad. I fucked up big time. I almost had it. I was using a binary to serial converter in order to figure out what the, the code was. You guys like my Leonardo DiCaprio hair? Hey, Leo here from the 90s. <laughs> Fuck it fucking chat person that mentioned that um all right anyway <laughs> so uh i gotta get it maybe maybe on wednesday i get a haircut chat nurse nurse i need a haircut okay so f82f is now up into the system let's see where we get to another serial monitor here we go here we go that's what we're doing. We're just kind of... Oh, I, I left the serial prints in. Oh, well. Beep bop, beep boop bop. Now, this moves so fast, we don't know what the hell's going on. It's still doing it. Are we sending our thing? We're not sending our stuff. Where's my stuff? Gap end procedure. It doesn't like what we send it back when we end the procedure. Wait, here's our stuff. No, wait. It reset. It did a system boot. Oh, no! Yeah, it restarts from the beginning when it doesn't like what's going on. What's wrong with gap end procedure? It's like, bro, we ended the procedure. What do you want? We send the success here. By status. We're, this is F82F is the status one register. But for some reason, we're not doing whatever this is. So let's take a look at what, what's going on here. Thank you guys for the follows, by the way. I appreciate that. I do, I do. I appreciate that very much. So this is the ready check function, and the ready check function runs all the damn time. It should be running a lot, like almost too much. We're scanning our butts a lot, but that's just healthy. So when we're checking for ready, we're saying if the status is this, else if the status is this, we're not else ifing this one for some reason. We're not doing any of that. that. That would be where we put the module two checks and they mirror this one. This is where typing of all the stuff would be important. We're not seeing connection parameters, payload size change with the GAT MTU and the button packets zeroed being sent out at all. 
Command 14, shift it, we do that. That's known. F82F is ready one for some reason one. That shouldn't be the case at all. But we know it's F82F. That's what's being sent out. We know that. We've printed that. And that's internal. That's our own thing. Why wouldn't this go? If status 1 is equal to F82F, let's get rid of this. No, if we get rid of that, then it'll put it in there like a thousand times. Maybe that's what's been happening. No, because we bit set 6, so it'll, it'll change when we do the thing. So if I get rid of ready, it'll change from F82F as soon as we do this. What if the thing that happens directly after it is changing it? But it should it should be F82F for one loop of the program, at least. At least until uh, we set our new status, and then this would be a, a signal that's coming in, but when we send fee status, receiving the gap end procedure should happen after we go through all of the loop, because we go back to the input processor what I, i'm thinking about how our thread is going through the different functions of this program that we've put in the main loop when the main loop expires we do the main loop again and the main loop contains a bunch of commands that will load in a new serial packet and respond to that but in the same vein our our functions if we if we receive set parameters immediately after or during um are performing of that task, then it's not necessarily gonna do anything. We we won't skip this procedure is my interpretation of this. And ready one should equal zero. And this is an and function, it was an and function. But if we get rid of that, it might be, there might be no purpose in putting that in there. This will just say, hey, if the status during any of our loops is equal to fady tooth, then do all this stuff. I haven't seen any of that stuff happening. All right, upload it, and let's see if that fixed it. Just started by reading books and threads and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, man, the body of knowledge that I have is probably mostly based on this kind of stuff, learning how to fail. Beep, boop, beep, pop, pop. Yes, yes, yes. Something happened right there. It didn't work, but something happened. So let's take all this and let's see what's going on. Copy that. Put it into a note plus plus. Get rid of our old mistakes. Never talk about them again. And turn off your device so that it's not perpetually in an error state. Uh, I don't know what triggered because the last set of software that we <laughs> just dropped by like 30 users um the last set of software that we had like got this procedure to work properly button packet blah 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 all this stuff works all this stuff works start the discovery set the timer gap connect Start discovery is like way back here. What's going on with that? Gap connect to one. Connection opened. Set parameters. Fee status. There's our F82 again. There it is. Set the zero button packet. Connection parameters. I don't know why 01 is printing all the way down here. MTU. One. Then we receive another end procedure. We say, yeah, we're done. Set parameters, success, soft timer of zero. Okay, so far so good. Timer, timer expire, timer expire, timer expire. That many timers shouldn't be expiring until it starts to set up the buttons. So what's going on there? I think maybe we need to send another button packet
Hmm. I can add another button packet register to this thing. Well, here's what we observed to happen. And the characteristic values are complicated in the way that they interact. And I've, I've programmed it all. It should be in here. All these procedures. All right, so what's happening here? Um, scan response. And that contains our uh, ID, which in this case is different because it's a different device. Um, timer stop. Handle two. Is that really a timer stop? Hmm. End procedure. And then we say okay to that. Gap connect. We say, hey, we want to connect uh, with this handle. Now this is also handle one. They're both, both devices are handle one. So I don't know if maybe it doesn't like that. Um, we receive gap connect. We reply gap connect. We have a big delay, which we're not doing. Connection opened. Connection parameters are this. Set phi status. I don't even know what the hell that is. Then we receive a connection parameters and we reply. So we got it. Cosmo Quest, how you doing? Oh my god, you guys are here for a boring ass day. Uh, <laughs> we're going through our code bit by bit and we are correcting errors. I've made some new camera angles, so I don't know if those will be good or not. Um... My code should work. We know what to do. Uh, we're just not quite doing it properly. There's little little errors in the code that we need to correct over, right? We need to iron over all of the all the idiot mistakes that we've made throughout the code. So what we're doing is in kind, we are running the program, having it trip up, figuring out why. And we're just gonna keep doing this until we're done. We are maybe 50% through. There's a chance that parts of our code work perfectly. Uh, but if it doesn't, if all of if all of the steps of the procedure are wrong, then we need to go through them. See, the man, we have not yet. We we have yet to have this thing try to write any of the characteristic values. We haven't ever gotten to that, so we were stuck before, just about where we are right now. I don't know what the problem is, and it's very discouraging. But I think I think I'm hopeful because we've observed the whole process happening. We need to replicate it. So the thing that we didn't replicate is sending a button packet. See, we, we set a button packet after connection parameters. So it sets the parameters here. It receives this. All good on the connection parameters. And then we send a button packet. And then we send another button packet. And then we send the parameters with a payload size change. And then we say the MTU is, has been exchanged. So what's going on there? I thought we didn't need to directly replicate this. I thought we'd just send the button packet and send everything else. But it seems like maybe we need to do two. So status one is equal to F82F. I'm going to put in send a button packet, clearly. And then we're going to put in a couple delays. So let's go to our transmit packets. Zero E is what we need. So we're just going to put in a CMD, or no, EVT add rather. EVT add 0x0, zero 0e. Zero, zero, zero e. That E. We'll try that. Hey, Retro CRT. Thank you for the tier one. 19 months. Holy shit, man. Yo, thank you for the 19 months. How many of these can we get away with putting in here? Each of these is like 20 milliseconds. It's not that much. And we maybe need to, we might need to delay our response engine a little bit. I don't know what the timeout is on, on getting responses. So uh, we have 10 entries that we can play with. So 10, 9, 8, 7. Let's add it five times. 250 milliseconds. Might be too much. If the register fills up, we'll throw an error, so we'll know. Um, we'll try it. Let's try it. Beep, bop, beep. Oh my god, what did I do? Huh? 
Oh, because I copied and pasted it. Derp. Derp, derp, derp. I like to exist in simpler Arduino code, you know? Because then, then, then everybody can follow along. Our code is so complicated these days. Let's see what we do, though. Got comprehensive serial printouts that tell us everything that's going on. Okay, so this is where we're stuck. Hey, we sent our MTU and everything, but nothing is responding. Ah, <sighs> this is this is our life, chat. Why doesn't it like us? All right, so I'm gonna reset everything and turn it off. All right, let's see where we are. It looks vaguely familiar to what we had before. I'm actually gonna put this all in a new document. I don't, I don't like having this stacked up on top of one another. This is just like a scratch pad for a little bit. We'll have them side by side. That way we can compare them a little bit. I don't know why that's a new line. Let's fix that right now. I'm going to fix that before we get into the other thing. Hold on. Uh, GT LE connection parameters. Command connection parameters. Print, print F, print line. Okay. Well, that's not what's doing it. Although it seems like it is. GT LE connection parameters handle why is there a new line is h something no it's not the depreciated one it's a different one okay le yes yeah, so that's the one that we need uh command gap that's depreciated depreciated what the where is this function Why, why do you do this? Okay. Huh? Where is my function that prints? <laughs> where is it? <laughs> What's going on here? Wait, I can't find where this thing is getting printed. <laughs> oh, it's in a transmit. This is in the receive. I see, I see, I see. Oh, E, what the... Eh. Eh. Print line. Uh, okay, so it's just a basic error. Okay, so that, that does that. Wait, I have printf status. Oh, yeah, that's status one. So this is the... um, This is where the register is. I don't think we need to do this anymore because we've kind of gotten past this. We know the state of things when we print that. And I think our commands are coming out of this thing. So let's see where we get tripped up. So we get all the way to where it sends this magical code. We get F82F. We send a zeroed button packet. End procedure, success. Connection parameters, success. Hardware, soft, where, where's our button packet? There it is, there's our second button packet. Then it sends connection parameters, and we send back get MTU. We don't even send back our connection parameters, huh? We're working on uh, replicating the output of a Bluetooth low energy module. It's a little bit more complicated than that, but I don't have time to explain it to you right now because it's uh, fairly complicated. <laughs> it's fairly complicated. We're trying to replicate what I have in this document here, um, and that that is a module coming up to uh, functionality. It's basically a co what we copied down from a uh, packet sniffer. It's a, sorry, a, um, a logic analyzer. So what is this low energy module doing? Send zero, send zeros again. But this whole set parameters thing was able to happen there. And then we transmitted different set parameters. So if we do that too early, I think that's maybe part of the problem. Ah, that was the wrong window. So we're doing that too early or too late. 
Um, let's see. So, timer, success, timer ended, zeroed button packet, connection parameters interrupts us. Do we need to wait for a second connection parameters before we send it? We might need to. This is all about triggering the MTU. No, it's not frequency hopping. It's, it's a Bluetooth low energy module that's um, part of a simulator system called the Granite Devices SimuCube. And uh, we're just looking at the TX and RX. We're not looking at RF data. We're looking at serial data and we're trying to replicate the serial data coming out. Uh, so button packet comes out. So we do, maybe we need to wait for the connection parameters. I think we do. Because it sends the button, I think it sends it twice, which means I need to add something to my setup here. <sighs> Maybe we, maybe we trigger this on the second one. No, but we're looking directly at this in order to figure out whether or not we've set that. So maybe I just need to add... the second one there. See, the GAT writes have like four different packets that it sends back, and it's mysterious as to why. Uh, I don't understand what's controlling that. It seems like maybe they're just running the same way I am off of a status register. So the second connection parameters, we're looking to see whether or not it's already set. Because I think there's only one instance. See, EVT LE and then command LE are two different things. But let's take a look at command LE. Oh wait, no, we're talking about EVT, aren't we? We're talking about a different connection parameter. I get these confused all the damn time. I keep getting these confused and it's a, it's a problem. Where are we getting, okay, so what are we getting? Hold on, open that up. Uh, we're just doing an okay. We're just doing an affirmative, whereas Gap connect, EVT LE connection parameters. That's the event. But we're waiting for command LE. Okay. So 2F or whatever. What is that? That's uh, so the status register uh, looks like this ridiculous number that we here in this function. We're looking for it to equal F82F. What does that translate into binary? Binary! Yes, it's nothing! It looks like this. Oh my god, what a messy number. Uh, so, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 is blank. So we might have put a wrong answer in there. This is like crazy, right? Yep, wrong answer. So instead of that, oh my God, there's nothing. Oh, it's my stream monitor. Get it away. All right, uh, all right, let's go back over here. To the web page. Give me this number. Or no, give me this, no, give me this number. I need you to do the opposite of what you're doing. Swap. We need to set that one to... No. There's no twos in binary, chat. F83F is actually the answer that we want. So now we go back to my code, which is minimized. Stupid thing. And it needs to equal F83F. Nah. That's all the way over here in functions. So if we wait until we get F83F and then we throw in our event register, all the stuff that's supposed to happen in order to get the module up, we might have a different success here because uh, it seems like it, it receives that. And I don't, I don't, I'm not aware of the timing right now because we're not looking at this on the, um, 
on the the uh, logic analyzer. I could throw it up on the on logic analyzer and see what ours looks like. It would be interesting if the logic analyzer let us uh, compare like above and below one another the two things maybe it does i don't know i haven't played with it enough yet ah uh, okay so maybe this will work because really this gat mtu this this generic access something something M mtu module throughput unravel I don't, know. I don't know what the i don't know what the acronyms mean the the api documentation that we have does not explain what the acronyms are it really doesn't Maybe, maybe there's somewhere, but uh, I don't know. We get all this glorious, delicious data. Um, we don't get much beyond that. So, all right. Um, let's try this. I still have my big delay in there. I should get rid of some of the delay. We don't need this much. Let's just put like one delay packet in there because now we're triggering off of where we see it coming in. If we jump the gun and do that very early, that might be fine. We'll just see. I'll put two of them in there. They're only 20 milliseconds each. Yeah, this is sort of a hobby project. This isn't for anything official. This is a, a Granite Devices SimuCube controller, and I'm desperately trying to beat Raboz's uh, rally time. And uh, in order to do that, I put an eight position shifter onto my simulator setup. And that eight position shifter pushed us over the edge of the number of buttons that the Granite Devices SimuCube can take in as analog buttons, right? It takes in buttons through ethernet cables and it can only take so much. Um, so with the eight position shifter and, and before this, we couldn't control all the buttons anyway. So I've been wanting to do this for a while. And it's a, it's sort of a very comprehensive and complicated reverse engineering project that I can kind of sink my teeth into and show off how good at this stuff I am. Cause I do this, I do this kind of stuff. Um, sometimes I do it as a consulting gig, although all of my consultants have kind of dried out. Uh, I still get one every now and then. But uh, yeah, we do, we do sort of hobby style projects here and I try to keep chat along my pacing. I try to keep stuff simple enough that I can, that I can educate people who are just happening to be on Twitch and wanna watch something cool. Uh, a lot of people use me as background while they're working. Um, and every now and then somebody learns something and finds sort of an interesting hobby project and has fun with that. So I appreciate all that. One of the things in the future that we're gonna finish is redoing Burn the subs, which is a XY table that's on my wall that burns the names of subs onto a big plank of wood. And when I have burn the subs working, a lot of people, I get a lot fewer questions about whether or not this is my job. It's kind of an embarrassing thing. I don't know why so many people want to pry into your personal life. Um, all right, so that's all set. Let's upload it and let's see if that makes it work. Who would have guessed? It's F83F. I guess two and threes are ones and registers anyway. Uh, eeny, meeny, miny, bingus. Well, I, I guess we'll just do this one. And so here we are. This is our life. We're sitting here and waiting for something to happen. Turn this on. Come on, baby. Daddy needs a new pair of shoes. We haven't gotten it to ask for the GAT statuses the entire time that we've had this project working, so... God damn it. We're stuck in the same spot. Now let me get a little bit more of that. We'll just capture this whole thing so we know where we are. Why has it not asked for the fucking thing yet? I don't understand. It needs certain things to be set up in order for it to capture, or in order for it to ask for the, the GAT procedures. The, the GAT statuses or whatever. It sets them up. It sets up the, the, uh... Yeah, what the hell? Okay, set soft timer, send packet zeroed. Are we not setting the depreciated command gap set parameters? Uh, command gap connect. So it's saying, hey, connect to this address. Connect to this address. And we're like, yeah, it's, uh, it's handles one. It's like, all right, connect. And then we say, hey, the connection's open. Then we say, here are the parameters. And then we say, here's the fee status. And then it says, hey, uh, end the gap procedure. We're like, yeah, all right. 
and then it sends, hey, set these parameters. And we say, I, we did it. And then it says, hey, set this uh, soft timer. And we're like, all right. And then internally, we set the soft timer to 2710. And then we say, oh, our buttons are zeroed. And we're like, oh, our buttons are zeroed again. Here's some connection parameters. Here's the MTU, which means we're done. And then we just get timer, 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 timer. And then it says, hey, end the procedure. And we're like, we, we did, we did. What are you doing? We, we ended it. And it says, all right, timer, 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 end the procedure. And we're like, the fuck, bro? <sighs> I don't understand. We have, we have replicated exactly how this thing should be connecting. And aside from possibly some delays, we're doing everything that we should. This is like that episode of Star Trek where Commander Data lost to Kolrami and Captain McCarr was like, hey Data, sometimes you can do everything right and still fail. That's just life. And Data's like, oh. And then he dies. Um, I, I don't know what the fuck's going on with this thing, because we're doing everything we should. We do the connect parameters, and we're sending exactly what it wants to hear, and then it zeroes the button packet, and then it zeroes it again, and then it sends a payload size, what I assume is a payload size change, and then the MTU gets ex exchanged, and then we write a characteristic value again, and everything should come up. Everything should be fine. <sighs> Because then the next thing that it does is it sends the characteristic value of 15 and we just say okay to it and then we say end the, the GAT procedure. But we're not getting this. We're not getting this signal. I'm going to take a bathroom break. I'm going to go pee pee. Because I've been drinking more fluids than I'm made out of. Uh, and then I need to get a pitcher of water because I'm going to get kidney stones from drinking this shit. Uh... Maybe the characteristic value, maybe F70 for the ATT MTU is bad. Maybe the two devices have different ATT MTUs, although we saw, no, uh-uh. We saw the previous device do this too. Actually, we, did we not observe this from the previous device? Maybe this device has F70. I don't know where that ATT MTU is exchanged originally, though. I don't know where it comes from. I'm wondering if that's part of the, the, the puzzle here. Because here, MTU exchanged. Exchanged ATT MTU. So we get the connection handle. 01. And then F70 is the ATT MTU. I don't know what the fuck that is. Where it's coming from. And if I search at MTU, I get a lot of instances of it. Uh, gap characteristic value right. At most, ATT MTU 5, amount of data that can be sent at one time. ATT MTU minus one. So F7 is like the size of the, the data that can be sent, I think. They don't explain what it is. Set max MTU. Set the maximum size of an ATT message transfer unit. So ATT message transfer units. Same as set max. Uh... Larger than 23, selected by the system, max MTU, that response, indicates that an ATT MTU exchange procedure is completed. That's not what we're doing. See, this is exchanged MTU. Seven. You. Okay, this is 20 out of 20. I don't really do a great job of defining this stuff here. And I don't know, I don't know if it's set up by anything. 
And we don't really, this, this, the logic analyzer didn't really come up with anything. UTLE connection parameters, is MTU part of that? These are like burning questions, so I, I'm, before I, before I get my burning piss, I need to actually look at these burning questions. Transmit size, maximum data channel PDU, payload size the controller can send in an air packet. So it seems like, uh, I don't know, F7 is just a, like a, a size. F7, it's zero F7 is basically what they're trying. It's, it's two and it's little endian, so it's flipped. So it's zero, zero F7. So we send that and then we send that. And I don't know why the base station ignores it. I don't know what's going on. Let me put up a radioactive sandwich and a BRB. And then I'm gonna go have a little cry in the bathroom. Uh, where is that window? <laughs> like, I'm trying to get used to a new layout. All right, I'll be right back.
All right, just a quiet part of the part of the mix. Uh, I think we need to look at it on the um, on the logic analyzer. I think that's all I can really come up with. It's like we're doing everything we should. We should see if we're missing a, a signal in there. I think maybe we're missing the GAT procedure signal. Or the... I don't know. I mean, ideally, we'd be missing the GAT procedure signal. But uh, I just don't know. Here, let's uh, go over here. Now, I've hooked it up already to the logic analyzer. But the logic analyzer is only... Because we had to use ZDiag in order to install the drivers for the logic analyzer. So it only recognizes when it's plugged into one port. I did not know that that would be the case. So let's plug it into the port. We don't really need our serial readout while we do this, but if we need it, I can plug it into um, the other thing. I can plug it into the, the uh, seven port hub that I have, even though the seven port hub has a lot of stuff on it. It's got the, uh, the camera, it has the stream deck, it has... What the hell else does it have? Why, does it, why am I using up seven ports? Wait, the camera's on a, on a different hub. So it's the hub with the camera and the stream deck on it. It's this port. There's two other things connected to it. I don't know what they are. It wouldn't be USB for the monitors, because I don't think I have those plugged in. That's, like, useless. What else is plugged into the port? I don't know. Oh, that's a mystery that I need to solve. <laughs> what the fuck? What have I done? <laughs> what else is over here that's USB? Uh, I'll plug it in my cell phone. Oh, the cell phone power is one of them. Well, that's that's like four. And then that would make three open. Keyboard and mouse, those are two. So it's keyboard, mouse, hub, cell phone power. Arduino port, I'll call it. It's too open. What? What else do I plugged in over here? Huh? I don't. I don't know. I got some mystery USB devices. I should start unplugging them until the stream goes down. All right. So, logic analyzer. That thing is just hooked up to TX and RX. We plug it in here. Then we go to the computer. And I'm going to go to the old computer layout, uh, and i got to fix it. So give me a second here. i got to fix this uh, PC setup. So what we need to do is get you guys off of the air. My, my ever-moving, completely busy chat. But I can... Uh, man, I can barely... Wow, I can barely pay attention to chat right now moves so quickly um all right hold on let's let's start being sarcastic and actually fix something here so what i need to do is i need to move first of all you guys will stay there for right now i need to take the color source and move it over oh my god look at them go i need to take my giant oops uh <laughs> i clicked on the wrong thing Stuffing face, no time. Ah, oh, no, that's a noble pursuit. All right, I go over here. I need to hold control so it doesn't snap. A little bit, a little bit tighter. I'm trying to tighten this up a little bit so that I get more desktop space, but. Eh, eh. Okay. See, now I can use the overlay that I need, which is this one. There we go. Okay, uh, take this one, move it over here. It's still a little too big. I don't know what's going on with that. Why are they so big? All right, let's smallinate it a little bit. So face cam can be a little smaller. Yoink. And then this one, oh, that's going to create a lot of border, but... Oh, no! OBS just kind of, like, assumes what you're what you're clicking on. This one goes up to... Yuck. Stop snapping, you little bastard. 
creates a lot of border space, but it should be okay. The problem is the red lines that highlight stuff when I'm moving it around, I can't see under them. So it the red border, I think, is like part of it, and it makes it look like it's a little bit different. Okay, so this is going to be a little, I don't know, it's going to be Bush League for now. Just bear with me. I wish I could design these in another program, you know? That's exactly what I'm doing. You backseating piece of shit. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, I appreciate the OBS advice. I just wish I could, like, zoom in and design these in a slightly different program, you know? It's hard not to get yelled at when you comment on somebody else's code. My code's all over the place. If you want to take a look at it, I've posted it in the Discord. Um, you can take a look at it. Uh, it's changed slightly after this... Uh, after this stream, but for what we've seen, it does run perfectly. Ish. <laughs> we just have some problems with some timings on it. All right, I think this is good enough for now. It's everything is wrong, so you guys can deal with that. And then I need to get the display capture to be in the right position, and I need it to properties, not be display two. There we go. Back, we're back to display one. And we're all the way on the left. There we go. This is the one that I'm more comfortable with. I know how to move the windows in order to manipulate this one. Uh, what what was we gonna do? Oh yeah, we were gonna do a capture of this thing coming up, coming up to uh, coming up to speed. We're gonna capture our thing, and we're gonna see if we miss any of the signals that are running around. Now I don't have a good place for chat right now. You guys are you guys are in a bad way. Let's see if I can move you guys to a slightly more rational position if i put you in the upper left you're going to be blocking stuff that i do in the screen if i put you here i can't really put a border behind you because then you'll be blocking stuff that i try to show here i can put you over my face which today i'm fine with um but that's not a great position see there's not a lot of places that i, I can keep you guys revolving around maybe that's what i need to do i need to have them there for context because otherwise it looks like i'm just a piece of shit <laughs> I just start yelling at people for no reason at all. I guess right there, because if I'm reading chat, it looks like I'm looking right in front of me. Getting dizzy. <laughs> Shake your chat every now and then to get all the trolls out. Uh, <laughs> I'll try to I'll try to put you guys as much in the corner as possible. I would like chat to go away when I'm not using it, but that requires a bunch of stuff. It requires like plugins and stuff. Um, all right, so here we go. So we're going to uh, Pulse View. Man, when that when that's no longer in my uh, my frequently used programs, I'm gonna have a lot of trouble. Twenty kilohertz is not enough. We need like two hundred in order to properly capture the the serial signal that's running around. One million samples, I think, is okay. These are the important settings, by the way. Mmm, tap water. Ah, oh, ugh. Tastes like it's been sitting in the basement for a while. You are D2 and D0. I already know what I've been plugged into. So D2 and D0 are our things. Uh, eight data bits, no parity, no stop. Least significant bit first, hexadecimal results, nothing, nothing on the rest of it. Okay, so that's already set up. So I guess this, this layout has a... See, th th this button right here enables you to put up a decoder. This is the stuff that Chester Willard is missing out on. <laughs> I said I wouldn't do this this stream, but here we are. I'm tutorializing this entire thing. Um, yeah, so that's our session, right? Uh, I've disabled the other channels. That's something you can do up in the settings. No, up in the, yeah, this one, in the logic settings. I just disabled all the other channels. You can also right-click on them and do their properties. But uh, that's it, right? Um, aside from the, the serial setup and everything like that. So we're going to do that. I wonder if I, if I did a new view and I started, well, instead of, I don't know how we can cross compare them yet. Damn it, he's right here. Can controllers, oh my god. So, all right, well, I've catered the amount of time that we record to be approximately the amount of time it takes 
for the module to come up. The way that I did that is with the kilohertz setting and the, the number of samples. Probably bad, probably not the way that I should do it, but this allows me to get the data that I need and hopefully we get enough samples that, that we record everything. If not, I'll have to go up to 2 million samples and figure out what the kilohertz is. I'm not sure about it. You can calculate it, but I'm not gonna do that. All right, so let's, let's, take, it, let's take a look here. So if I hit run, it'll start recording. And I know everything's connected because I've worked with this setup before. So I hit run and then I start everything up and we start to get signals. I gotta zoom way out. Our Arduino doesn't have any power. Turn it off, turn it off, turn everything off. <laughs> turn it all off, stop it. Everything's stopping, our Arduino's not plugged into anything. It needs power, it needs power. Hold on, let me plug in the Arduino. I'm dumb, I'm dumb. We could probably power it off of the five volts that the other Arduino gets, but whatever. Whatever, whatever. Plug that in. All right, try again. Now, 200 kilohertz, 1 million samples, and it stopped somewhere along the line? I don't like that, but let's try it again. So, uh, hit, oh wait, uh, reset the microcontroller, turn on this, hit run. Signals, please. Signal, signal, and then it stops. Yeah, we're not getting enough data. Hold on. Pop. Uh, do I really have to go? That's when we go to 2 million samples. We'll double the sample time, but I don't think that's really going to help us. Is this... Hold on. First of all, before we do anything, let's check to see. Okay, so we are getting 22, 87 to 87. Doesn't make any sense. We're not quite getting the right logic out of this thing. We get plenty of samples though, so we can probably lower the kilohertz. Although one, two, eh. we don't need to min-max it. I just need to get uh, workable signals out of this thing. And we had it before, I just forget what my settings were. Hell yeah, dude. This is, uh, this is so complicated, what we're doing right now. Uh, the goal is simple. The goal is just to get more buttons working on my system without me spending a billion dollars or reinventing the way my entire steering setup works. And that, that, led into, that led into some slightly more complicated things that we're doing here. But uh, it's, it's a little needlessly complicated. I don't think there's a stop bit on these, but I don't know why we're not getting... I don't know why we're not getting proper... proper stuff out of it. And I, I, the way that I found this out before was by just messing around with it. I mean, I heard it was 8N1, but I guess not. That's not really... that's not really working. Odd. That's not gonna do it. Ignore. No. None. I think that's a, it's a matter of the samples and the kilohertz. So if I go to 100 kilohertz, what, what happens there? What I need is a long time recording. Let's try it again. Reset. Run. Turn it on. Where's our data? Oh, there it is. There we go. Alright, that should be sufficient. Turn it off. All right, hopefully we get good data out of this, though. Why is only one channel working? This is not correct. Whatever's happening here. Three, one, one E. I mean, it looks like data, but I don't think it's right. And we're not getting the second channel. Did that pop off? It might have popped off. Everybody's connected. The second channel is doing nothing. All right, great. D02020 is not correct. See that? The big old gap right there. I mean, our ones and zeros, I guess, are coming through. It thinks that's a stop bit, though. Why does it think that's a stop bit? Data bits, eight. Stop bits, zero. One stop bit? Oh, that might be it. Uh, D0 is not a thing. All these should start with a 20. 
Why is my glucometer beeping at me? Please test PG. No. <laughs> all right, how do I get the data out of this stupid thing? Why are we only getting one channel? Oh my god, look at all this crap. I think that's the wake-up call. But that shouldn't be a 28. That should be a 2-0. Yeah, sample frequency is too low. All right, 500 kilohertz. Let's go. Reset the micro. Turn on, run. What the? Why? Why do you forsake me? <sighs> Can't even tell if that's the right thing. Do I need to like zoom way out in order to get the proper thing? Because it, uh, it just like stops there. I think it runs out of like bandwidth or something. Logic there, blah, blah, blah. I don't really have much ability to do more with this. That's, that's just view stuff. Logging. I think, yeah, maybe it's, maybe it's just like triggering wrong. And why am I not getting my D0 channel? That would be a hardware thing. They're both plugged in and I got ground hooked up just fine. Everything's the way it was. So, where are you, D0? Where have you gone? I should be seeing you. Unless that one's ground. Hold on a sec. No, it's not ground. I can see the, I can see the little thingies hooked up to the little thingies. All right, let's try again. There's some data, and there's some data, and then it stops. Ugh. I had this working perfectly before, I swear. We just need to zero in on the right settings. <laughs> and I don't know why it's not capturing the other the other sample. 2011. Okay, so we got enough samples, but it's like by a factor of four. Which this thing should be perfectly capable of capturing all this data. I don't know why it runs out of samples over here. But we can definitely, like, ramp this up. It looks like it's not capturing some stuff, though. Hold on, let's see. We need to we need to sort this out. So what are we set to right now? Zero. It still misses stuff. What the heck? Ah! Parody. One. I heard it was 8N1, but it still misses a bunch of stuff with that. None. Zero. Nah. Ignore. No. Can it? I don't know how to do that. See, because there's, there's a length, but it's triggered by a thing. Yeah, because this is wrong. And I, I had it working perfectly fine before, by the way. I had it working perfectly, and I had both channels coming in just fine, so I don't know what's going on here. And I haven't played with it enough to be comfortable with it. That's all connected properly. D0 and D2. Oops. Trigger option? Hmm. I mean, trigger on a change in either direction? What would it be? It would be, because it starts high, and then it goes low, and then we send the rest of everything. I'll just do on a direction change. So any direction change. 
Why did why, why this get below? Here, you go back down there. I don't know why it's not capturing, though. That's like a hardware issue, and I don't see any reason why it should have a hardware issue right now. That one's perfectly connected. And then this one here, I can move to another pin, but... Oh, it's actually influencing the level of the, the wave. Might be a problem with that. I don't know how how uh how much this thing influences. We got both of them before though. Why would it stop? Weird. Reset. Power on. Run. Hmm. Well, apparently that's doing nothing. Oh, is that a differential trigger? I think that's a differential trigger. Or, no, that wouldn't be a different... Fuck, what the fuck? Turn it off. Hit reset. Hold on. Hold on. This is a bad trigger. Do a direction change. Are we still recording? Stop. We'll do... We'll do a negative slope. Try again. Try again. Are you kidding me? What's going on here? Oh, my... My signals are all fucked up. Why are they all fucked up? What have you been doing to my signals here, logic analyzer? It didn't do anything before. It's like my serial is all screwed up because of the logic analyzer. It's, uh, it's influencing it somehow. But, like, I'm not... This shouldn't be doing anything weird. Got that connected to ground. That connected to ground. Those over there. All of my stuff is sort of the same as it was before. Just that the logic analyzer is somehow not playing nice with the Arduino. Oh, you only want it on one channel? That doesn't... But this is a call and response. So I don't think that's really going to do anything. Does that start the recording at a certain trigger? In which case, I want it to be on the send channel, and I don't know which one is, that is yet. Yeah, like here, look at this. When I turn on the logic analyzer, this is what the serial looks like. Look at that, it's like, it's not really coming through. It's only coming through on one channel. Which doesn't make any sense, and would indicate that I've hooked up something wrong. Because when I have the serial thing and the modules in there, it works perfectly fine. I don't understand why that would be influencing it in a negative way. I have the black wire is connected to ground, which is going over to here, which is the ground wire here, and then the TX and RX are brown and white, Brown and white are going to channel 1 and channel 3, which is the way we had it connected before. So I don't understand what would happen, what would have changed in the settings. And, 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 I've looked, I, I've, I've observed this previously. I mean, we, when we first started out, everything observed perfectly fine. So ground is going to blue. Yeah, it's going to blue, which is going to this one over here. Going to this one. It's going to this one. Which is also going to the ground of the, the PCB. It's going to the ground over here. It's going to ground on the Arduino. Why would this be all screwed up? I mean, this is why we incorporate resistors into setups like this. <sighs> uh hold on. Start from start from the beginning. Your mode. D2, which is channel 3, D0, which is channel 1, 115200, 8, blah, blah, LSB, first, no, no, no other settings, D0, no trigger, D2, no trigger, uh, other settings, those are good, FX, whatever drivers, scan, Well, that's new. No devices found. 
Unplug the logic analyzer. Plug it back in. Scan. There it is. Okay. That might have been the problem. So, D1 is out. Three, four, five, six, seven. All of them gone. So that might have been the problem. Go down to UART. What'd you just call me? And from memory, these D2, D0, 152, 8, none, 0, LSB first. Hopefully that's set up now. And now we just need to mess around with this stuff in order to get it right. Let's go to 100 kilohertz and see what we get. We might have to do 2 million at 1 kilohertz or something. I forget what the settings were from last time, but we'll figure it out. All right, anyway. Uh, turn it on. Run. There's a data coming in. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, here we go. That's enough data. No, I ran it again. Oh, no. Oh, I fucked it all up. All right, start over. Uh, I think I think I needed to just redetect the device. It was going off of old settings and something went weird. So turn it on. One, two, three, run. Zoom way out. I'm just going to let it run until it's out of data. Which is just about here anyway. Yeah, see? <laughs> just run until you're out of data. All right, let's observe what we got. Now, for these things, I need to actually turn off all... What's going on here? Where's my... It didn't get anything on the other line. Why? Is this a three volt device and I blew it up? It didn't get anything on D0 this time. Whereas before it would just get it just fine. Maybe I'm negatively influencing stuff. It, clearly communications are going on here. Because it, it seems to go both ways. All right, let's get rid of the bits. I don't need to see all this stuff. I don't need to see the warnings. I don't need to see the brakes. It's all useless. Yeah, it's not the right thing. That should be a 20. I don't think it's down to settings here. No, it's not down to settings. I think this is down to the amount of data that I'm capturing. Let's go to 2 million samples. And then a higher kilohertz. Well, we double the kilohertz, go to 200. I don't know why the other channel's not coming through. I don't understand that. Um, maybe I can move the channel in a minute, but let's get these settings down first to make sure that we know what the problem is. It's like problems on problems and problems. It's shaving the act, personified. There's clearly two-way communications going on, so I don't know what the problem is. It could be a bad wire. This should be approximately the same capture time. 5,500,000. Okay. Well, we'll go to that. I guess we were just pushing the envelope completely. Let's just... Oh, God, it's cursed. Yeah, it's clearly not getting the right thing. So we need way more. So 5,500,000. I didn't know we had to push the envelope so hard. All right, so we're going to need to observe about this much time. And then we hit run. I Yeah, I honestly don't know what's wrong with um, the other channel. We can use a different channel, I guess. But let's see if we got a good capture. Yes, we did. We got four four samples per capture, which is fine, because twenty one 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 zero one 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 zero yeah is uh hey what are you and then it goes uh yeah it's a bunch of stuff and then we hit the thing and we reset and we send the thing that says hey we reset that's maybe wrong <laughs> that might be wrong yeah something's still messed up. We're not starting with a 4C. What the hell's wrong with you, bud? 
I had such a good capture before, I don't understand what's going on. I had such a good capture. This is still totally wrong. Yeah, it's still missing stuff. I don't know why it's cursed. Like, why does it think that's 4C? Why is it messing up so much? It's still 115200. That's definitely the BOD. I bet if we plug in the other device, it's like super clean. Maybe that's been the problem this whole time, is that my serial is... That's not, that's not what's been happening, though, because we've been able to, to observe, we've been able to receive and send all the right stuff. This is like a this is like a silver bullet when I first got it working. It just like immediately was like here's your here's everything, here's what's wrong, here's what's right. I just have too much stuff plugged into it. Yeah, the logic level changes when I change D D2, but D0 is the one that isn't doing anything. That's this channel. This channel's plugged into here. And there is plugged into the yellow wire. It's plugged into that wire. Why does it have two wires? Oh yeah, one of them's going into this. Yellow wire goes over to there. Yellow wire goes over to here. Over here. I'll wiggle it a little bit. There's definitely two-way communications going on. We're just not observing it. So if I change D0 to like channel 5. Let's just see if channel 5 likes it. And we'll just enable channel 5. And if this is what I had before, I don't know why it's not working now, but uh, let's just get another capture here. It's weird because I can see the, um, the logic level changing when I plug it in, which is not right. Still not working. What the fuck? Eight C. That's so wrong. It hurts. We had some good data before, but then it would slip up on the larger signals. It seems like the only thing we're observing is our RX from the microcontroller, which is odd to me. So it's not the channel. It's not the channel doing this. It's something else. I'll keep it on D5 though. Turn this off. I don't know how the triggers work on this either yet. Hub bub bub. Hub bub 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 bub. Wait a minute. Chad. Channel two. D two. Zero. One, two, three, four, channel four. The, the numbering is off, yeah. I don't think it, does it capture it when it's not selected? This may not solve our problem, but it might, I don't know, it might give us something. And then reset the micro. Turn it on. Run. There we are. So it was the channel that... I don't know, maybe it blew out a channel or something. Alright, so now we just need to resolve our data and why it's coming through cursed. Well, now it's coming through alright. Now it's still, like, missing stuff. No, maybe that works. 22? 22F2? Yeah, 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 that works. Why did that solve it? Look at that, and it gets the entire big signal. Break. 
I, I don't think there's breaks, man. I don't... Uh, eh. Okay, so we got a capture. We got a capture. Our error is over here. Way out here. Uh, A01C0 is a timing event. So that's where it's responding to the timing events. So right about here is where we see some complicated data. All right, thank you, chat. That, that helped me resolve that. It's, it's, it's like you're troubleshooting something and then you introduce a new tool and it's, it's, you gotta troubleshoot that. So that's fun. That's always fun. Uh, <laughs> 3901F70. Here's the MTU completed because we got the F7 there. Why are TX bits in here? Get out of here. Jeez. Just trying to introduce all this data that I don't need. So this is GAT MTU exchanged. These are very, very far spaced compared to what we had before. I think the way that they were before is they were all bunched up into one signal. I don't know if anything might be, that might be timing something out maybe, you think? I mean, I guess I could make a signal that, that puts them all together and makes them th this one little block that outputs at that juncture. What I'm interested in is whether or not we're missing a signal here and we're not responding to it. But it appears like every time we need to. Now, how do I compare this to another rolling signal? That's, that's, that's a question that I have. Which one is 8411? 8411. Control F. 0804. EVT, like connection phi. So these spaced out events are packets that would traditionally come in bunched right up against one another. Theoretically, we could bunch them together. What I'm most concerned with is that we miss one of these. The hex doesn't give me timing information. I really need a timing information to compare the two. I could start another project in this window. Uh, add a new view, and that would be session number two plug in the module and try that out. And maybe that's not gonna give us a direct, I want two windows. Well, actually I think I can do that. Wait a minute. New session, who dis, windowize it. Now we're talking. Now we're cooking with GAT. All right, we got, a, we got a method of direct comparison here. So now I just need to take advantage of that. So what I will do, all the settings are the same. Looks like they are. Well, D4 and D2 swapped places. Change places. All the samples are the same. So if on this one, I hit record, where's my record button? Do I have to, like, full screen this in order to record? This isn't the same... Oh, this is the same signal. Ah! That doesn't work. Yeah, I don't know how to do it. Oh, there's the record button. But the session, it's the same session, so I don't know, I don't know what to do about that. Yeah, I don't know what to do about that. Damn it! So it's a, yeah, it's a little, uh, lack a little bit of function here. Alright, so let's just see if we can find some kind of a smoking gun here. I mean, so far it looks like everything's kind of coming through properly. Are these the... Oh, these are still the timer responses. Hold on. We're too far. No, we're not. We just got the fee status. 
Because, like, a bunch of data comes in, we exchange a bunch of stuff. 8-0 would be a connect. Oh, chat. <laughs> this is what I've been dealing with the past week. I was hoping to get around some of this stuff. I was hoping we wouldn't have to do this today. Because that MTU connect is not coming through. Out here in no man's land. These are the timing responses. Here are our three signals going into the base station, and it won't have any of this. We're sending a button here, right? Zero B. Yeah, this looks a lot like the other one. Send a button, bunch of time passes, we send another button, and then we send a bunch of other packets with it. What if we, what if we sent them really quick? Because that's really all I can think of, because these, these would come through, like, really quickly. Some of them, anyway. Uh, I already tried this, and I think I might have just wiped session one. Oh no, there's session one. Session two, is this totally new? No, uh, okay, new session and not new window with the same session, you're right. Okay, so FX2FAW, scan... Please. Hello. Ugh. Eh. Eh. Scan. Connect. Set up. No, it's two and four. Okay. Decoder. You are. Four and two, eleven fifty two hundred, none zero, LSB first, all that's good. Uh five million five hundred. And now I can unplug the Arduino. Ah, that was harder to unplug than I thought. Plug in the module, turn on the power supply, turn on the remote device. Gotta wait for the power supply to boot up. It takes a little while. So now I'm turning on the uh, this little guy on the this little guy over here. I'm turning on. Turn him on. That's blinking. I hit record. All right. So now we have an example to go off of. We'll just wait for that to. There we go. That maxed out. I turn the base station off. Now I need to turn off all the all the view stuff that I don't want. Now I wish I, I think I can put them one on top of the other. So bits we don't need, breaks we don't need. All this is just like useless information. Uh, bits we don't need, breaks we don't need. What the? Hey, man, this is finicky software. We make sure that our capture is coming through properly, and it is. Okay, window this. Bring this down like that. Go like that. Can it display the two sessions? It can't. <laughs> it can't display the two sessions at once. Ah, you bastard. Take it from the top. Command system reset. This would be the response from reset. Because command system reset, response from reset. I really wish I could layer them on top of one another. Where's our, where's the beginning of this? Command system reset, response from reset. We're waiting an appropriate amount of time. I don't know how we managed to do that. Is our D4 and D2? Oh, we need a... There's a bird outside that sounds like one of those little, like, laser gun things that you press. It's like... <laughs> System, response, 
we can get the timing between them if we need to, but we don't we don't need to observe this part of the signal. I just wanna just wanna make sure. Look at the difference in timing overall timings between these. Hello? Why isn't it snapping? Why are you snapping? Oh whatever. Good program. 39 milliseconds. 23 milliseconds. Why are we so much slower? Okay, anyway. All right, so we get through the first initial blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 long, blah, blah, blah. So we get through all that. Get through all this. We don't really need to pay attention to anything until we get to the fee status. Why? Where's my scroll bar? Wait a minute, what the fuck? Did I... I don't have a scroll bar for the horizontal on this. All right. All right, so fee status. It's way over here. So this is what we're interested in, right before we get into the timing stuff. Now, this signal has everything. It's got all the way up until the buttons, stuff that we're missing, where it, like, says, hey, look at that. Two signals right on top of one another. Zero A zero nine four one one A. It's configuring all this crap while other signals roll in. Where's our fee status? Three nine six one. That's that's uh release the gat. So we're not even at that point yet. Nine six zero one. See, you guys can tell that I've I've memorized a lot of these signals now at this point. Here, I should be looking at the other window so that you guys can see what's going on. What's going on here? We got a bunch of signals, uh, just one on top of the other. The problem with this software is when I zoom in, it doesn't actually zoom in. Like, the text doesn't get any larger. I can probably go into the settings. Or not. <laughs> I don't see anything in here that helps me edit that. Logic trace height. I mean, we're looking for the uh, decoder trace height. Or the decoder just, like, height. Default analog trace divider height. Default trace logic height. Decoders. Nothing. All right. Cancel. Fucking thing. I, I You know, it's it's GitHub software. A0396 is is a release GAT. So right now it's configuring um, the registers that are going to con control like buttons and stuff getting hit. So 2495, 95 is again, uh, enable the 11 register. And the 11 register I happen to know is button presses. And then that confirms it right there. So the base station is telling it to configure stuff. Vos is DOS. Zero three one nine four one seventeen. So this is that seventeen register. So we're still doing this stuff. We're not doing the phi stuff yet. Nine four one seventeen. Seventeen register. I have no idea what it is, but it's got some very complicated responses that I have coded into the software. We know how to respond to that register. Here's it releasing another GAT. We're trying to figure out, we're trying to get this synced up to where we're stuck. So this is configure a 15 register. It does some complicated stuff with a 15 register, but the response is always just the generic OK. So it's like, all right, I'll just respond with the generic OK every time. It doesn't even respond for, why does it think that I want to pull that up? Why does it think that I want that? Other fucking program. Anyway, um, 229900, that's again, it's just saying, yeah, yeah, OK, cool. It doesn't even respond with like a like a specific device. 94117, that's another 17 configuration. 96, uh, there it's asking for a 17. Here it's got two signals coming in 22970, 22970. We're looking for an 8411. 
22970. Hold on. 33, 318, 2F. 9597. Nine, that's read characteristic value. That's the, okay. So that's the confirm on the read. So we're not even where we're supposed to be yet. We're still looking at those. 2299, nine, that's another confirm. 94 is right register 17. Why are we still, man, this is like 5,000 signals. 9610, that's another confirm. Holy crap, man. Look at this, it's communicating on top of itself. Nine nine one fifteen zero. That's another fifteen register while it's while it's replying a seventeen. I really hope that while I'm writing, the serial register is able to accept signals. Because if we if we have uh you know colliding signals like this, I think the Arduino serial thing deals with that. Ah. <sighs> Nine four one eleven. So this is our first button packet getting, or one of the first button packets. This may be where we need to be. Twenty two eight zero six C. Twenty two C zero zero. That's a timing response. Here it's setting up the twenty the the twenty seven billion second timer. 27.10.0, yeah. Or no, 27.10, I think, handle zero? A C0 is the command. 10 is not the handle. 27.10 is probably the timer. 0, 0, 27.10. And then, like, the handle's over here. And then we confirm that the timer's been set. B0941101B. So here's the button. And then that's followed up immediately by 8.2, which is the set parameters, and we're setting FB. We're not setting F7, we're setting FB. Uh-oh. Might have the wrong, the wrong thing getting set. We set another button. No. 111.1B0... Four zero zero zero, and then twenty two nine nine zero zero. We send another button packet out that's followed by only one packet. Nine six one. All right, so let's rewind. Here we are, <laughs> record scratch. Well, I'm sure you're wondering what happened to me. Wait, what the fuck is this thing? Three zero, E two. Oh my God! We have so many packets to figure out what the fuck is going on. Um, this is this is a little bit different than what I observed before. Uh, our 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 thing is not quite doing this. Let's see where we're sending a three zero. What is three zero? Control F O three zero zero. Well, that's not what we're looking for. Three zero gap scan response. All right, this all happens very very quickly, doesn't it? Seven AC nine four three blah blah blah. That's just like a there are so before it ends the gap scan response, there are like wayward gap scans that jump into the queue, and uh, they're just coming in. So until until this thing ends, that it'll get a bunch of random scan responses. But our code is tight enough that we don't we don't do that. So, 2033, that's the, I believe that might be end, sc end, end the scan response. Yeah, 33, end the gap procedure. It's done listening to us. So once it does that, the next thing to come out of this thing is, that's, that's the, okay, I've ended the, the gap scan. So 233, let's go, let's go to that. Oh boy, where the hell is it? Probably around here. Only 64 bytes. Uh, I think we're within 
because our the buffers that I've programmed are like fifty. So I think we're I think we're good. Uh eight two one six. <sighs> I should program a Linda coder. Yeah, three zero D nine. Okay, so here's our here's our gap scan. We only send one in our program. And then here's where it says eight three and then connect to this address and set it as number one. Uh why does it do that? Ah, oh, that really pisses me off. I don't want to see all this stuff. <laughs> Sorry, man, we don't do that command here. It, it would take larger, it would take a lot of text for me to explain what I'm doing. We're faking being a Bluetooth module and we just took logic scans of both the, the program that we're trying to work through in order to fake being a, a module and the, uh, the actual module that we're trying to be. be. We've, we've got a logic scan of both of those, so we're comparing them right now. The only way we can compare them, can't do it in the same window because this program um, but we can at least flip between the two windows and compare the, the one and the other one. I don't know if I can just drag this tab. Nope. Nope. I can't right click on the tab or anything. Man, I wish I could. Maybe I should have done two instances of the program. Maybe that's the way to do it. Actually, that probably is the way to do it. So, all right, anyway, we can't do that. We'll just, we'll just continue to do what we're doing. Um, I'm looking for, and by the way, our title also says everything you need to know. Command gap and procedure we're looking for. The 23-3, didn't we just find that? Yeah, 330. Here's our confirmation. Which one are we looking at? We're looking at the other one. So 20, 9816816. Uh, so 9 is the length, 8, 0 is the command. So that's event connection open. So here's our, our gap connect confirm 31A. Is that what we're just looking at? No, that's after 33. Where's 31A? Why are these all coming in asynchronously? It's always messing me up. 30, then we get an 80. And the eight zero confirmed. Six C so C zero. That's setting a timer. This is all fucked up, chat. I'm trying to figure out. So so what I don't understand, and what I'm trying to emulate, is the procedure by which the base station finishes connecting to the module. Well, actually, technically, right now what we're trying to figure out is how the module gets into a state where it's happy with the connection and it begins assigning uh, gap procedures. The gap procedures are the internal module's responses to stuff and, and, and other internal module stuff. It basically says, hey, I need you to enable um, a signal every time a button's pressed. I need you to enable a signal uh, that periodically uh, kicks back the battery status. I need you to enable a signal that kicks back the RSSI state so that I can report that back to the base station so the user knows what's up. What's up, what's up, what's up? So we're looking at why or how it's able to do that stuff. Um, and we've tried to emulate it. We've got a pretty decent program going on, which is available in the Discord. It's in the stream project section and in a little bit more of a fledgling state than it is here. So we've We've solved a couple errors, but now we are in a state where um, the unknown is starting to overtake the known. And I thought we sorted everything out, but it appears that this module is doing things slightly differently this time around. I'm stuck. I'm stuck because I'm stuck because SI Labs doesn't seem to to convey precisely the 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 number of steps that I'm supposed to go through. And maybe I just haven't found the right documentation, but Chat hasn't pointed me in the right direction either, so I partially blame them for not letting me get my personal projects done. Anyway, um, let's try to figure out where exactly we are. 
can I can I save this and then open it up in a new instance of the program? ASCII analog, art logic, binary logic, digits and logic data. I don't know what decoder, I don't know what uh, any of this stuff. Because like if I just do a text dump from hex, that's not really going to help me. Analog data values and units. Art logic data. It'd be so much easier if I had a top to bottom setup on this. Anyway. Okay, so I, I just wish I wish I could zoom in and out without this thing being terrible. Why is it going up and down? I'm okay, okay. Like if I could zoom out more and actually still see what the fuck is going on. Ugh. Alright, alright. 22330, we are confirming something. Uh, 80 is this one, even though before we observed gap connect, so it, it kicks back the number that it's supposed to connect to, the UUID, the, the ID of the remote Bluetooth device, right? In this case, it's 86BD743C97A1A. Uh, that, is, that is this device over here. So we get... 2831A, blah blah blah. That's right back here. Uh, no, where the hell is it? See, the problem is when you zoom out, there's like huge gaps. So 283, 20, I really wish there was a center, center click and scroll. And then also this UART size changes the number of rows depending on what's displayed. And it just, it's just not good for me. It like all of these little UI changes just make it really kind of abrasive to use. Um, whatever, let it be what it is. It's free, <laughs> you know? 2831A7AC943D76B08, blah, 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 FF, right? So that's where we are. Oh, in our case, uh, we sent FF. This one sends, oh no, this is the first time. So FF or 01 right here represents whether or not it's the first time we're connecting to that device. Let's find this pulse in our device. What are we sending? 2831A1D2C4 blah, 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 01. So we're saying, yeah, we've already, we've already connected to this device. Zero, zero, one, zero, zero, ones. We're sending the same signal. What happens next? Let's find out. An eternity passes. One eternity later. Um, an eternity later, we get, no, we send three, nine, six, zero, zero, one. What? Why is that being sent? 28.3, so connect to this device. We send, then it sends three nine six zero one. Three nine six zero one. What does this thing do? Why are these why are these reversed? God, this program. Oh, we didn't reverse D2 and no, we did. D2 and D4. D2 and D4. Wow, blah, blah, blah. This should be the same. God, this fucking pro... I just want to scroll backwards. Ugh. It just, like, flipped the color on us. I don't know why. Alright, 31A, 31A. The colors are flipped. Just keep that in mind. 31A, 31A. There's a gap scan response that we don't care about. Then it says stop the scan. Stop the vote. But we say... It says 396001. 39601. 
Why is it sending that? Is it sending that or are we sending that? This is the thing that I still... Ugh. I gotta figure out which one D2 and D4 is, huh? <laughs> I gotta figure out which one's which here. Let's just get that straight first. So the 831A is us setting a handle. So that means that one is TX. D2 is TX. Okay. There we go. 2831A, UART TX. I gotta go back to the other signal just to so we get the exact same compare. Twenty eight three one A. Is that us saying that? Yeah, it is. No, we receive it. God damn it. I had the other one configured correctly. <laughs> no. So this is actually received and this one's actually transmitted. Okay. So this is correct. We receive this signal. Stop it. So that's RX. That's wrong. Okay, so this one needs to be flipped. All right, makes more sense now. The, per the perspective of TX and RX in the, in the case of what we're working on right now is that the module is, is what we're trying to emulate. So the module receives a signal from the base station or it sends a signal to the base station. So right now it receives from the base station, hey, connect to this one and call it handle one. We're like, all right, we can't call it macaroni. So then we transmit 396001. What the hell is that? Why are we transmitting that? Is that us? That's us. Why are we sending that? It's nowhere in our procedure. 396906. Uh, we're sending that a GAT procedure is completed when we have not completed any GAT procedure. What? What are we doing? Why do we do that? That might be confusing, this thing. Did I put a wrong number into one of the commands? That might be it. Because we send the connect, or we get a connect... And then we don't say anything. What the fuck? Yeah, so some weird stuff is going on here. So let's take a look at our code now, I guess. We're getting there. We're rooting out the uh, the 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 cause of the problem. It's it's a it's a slog, but we will get there. So, I need to go to the programming window. I need to get OBS out of the way. The display is linked. God damn it. All right, hold on. I need to change the display. <sighs> display capture. Louie! Rating with a party of 26, Louie! Ah, uh, this is a boring day. We're working on faking being a Bluetooth module. I'll give you, let me put my display capture in here properly and then I can give you a rundown of the project. I was hoping to finish this so that we could actually have a freaking uh, game stream like Thursday, but it turns out this is a massive pain in my ass. So hold on, let me, let me do a display capture and then I'll add a new one. And it's not this one. I want it to be uh, display number two. Look okay. And then I want to move it down. It goes way down to the bottom. There it is. And then I can drag this. No, no, display capture too. Freaking OBS. I have a new display capture window that I'm hoping will work out nicely for us. Um, all right. So what's what is what is what is what has happened, Louis? I hope I hope the lunatics had a fun time over at your your channel. I see Louis streaming, and I'm like, man, I should be watching him right now. 
Um, those of you who are here from my stream, you guys should check out Lunatic Live. There's a lot of cool stuff. Yeah, OctoJ's here. OctoJ's the entire reason that Djibouti Show and Louie know anything about me at all. Uh, I, I don't know. There's some conversation that was going on like ahead of the Djibouti Show stream. And uh, OctoJ mentioned that he moderated for my channel. And they were like, oh, who's that? I still have the email notification that said that they followed me. Because <laughs> I'm a freak. I'm a freak. Uh, anyway, we've got, um, a simulator set up, and things have gotten a lot more complicated than I wanted them to be. Here, uh, let me, I need to move my video monitor back to where it was. I need to rearrange all of my desks in order to get everything properly here, so I'm capturing my good side. Uh, but anyway, the, um, simulator set up. Well, what has happened here? What has happened here? And I, I do hope that some people migrate over to Louie and check out his streams, because he says... A lot of retro stuff that I think you guys would really be interested in. We've got a couple people here that do, like, repairs on retro gaming devices and stuff. So, this is a Mercedes S-Class steering wheel. It didn't start like this. It didn't start like this. This started with a LAN party many, many years ago, where my friends and I decided to play My Summer Car with absolutely no information at all whatsoever. Um, there's something special about playing My Summer Car with no information at all whatsoever. You see, My Summer Car is one of those games that you have to have the wiki open for. Due to the fact, primarily, that, uh, there are things you don't know about My Summer Car that will kill you! And it's a game that I would love to see Louie try. I'd love to see him try My Summer Car. See, we played My Summer Car at a LAN party with no information. Most of us died for dumb reasons. The one friend that was playing the longest, we did like a no-death run, because uh, it's not like you can do multiplayer that game. Did a no-death run. The person who died last fell into a septic tank and died, which is an amazing way to go. You know, he died like he lived. <laughs> 1995 counts as retro. 1995 was only six years ago. Anyway, um, this is a Mercedes S-Class steering wheel hooked up to a three-phase industrial motor. Why? Well... I went out and I googled, and I went, you know, I need a steering wheel to control this game. I think that would make it a lot of fun. You can actually change the inputs from the left and the right button on the steering wheel and make it a little bit better to control at high speeds and stuff. But but before doing that, I was like, you know, I should take a look. I should take a look and figure out how to build or or buy a direct uh, well a, a force feedback steering wheel was the the thought process. So I look up a force feedback steering wheel. And I'm looking around, and I'm looking, and I'm looking, and I'm looking, and I say, you know what? Uh, maybe, maybe I should look at direct drive steering wheels, because these Logitech little fuckers are expensive. I look up a direct drive steering wheel. Oh my god, they're expensive. They're ridiculously expensive. Why are they so much money? Oh my god. So it was like, can I DIY this? Maybe I can spread the cost over 10 years. Um, so I look up the DIY steering wheels. And there's something like the, the Open Wheel Project. And so I look up the Open Wheel Project, and there's a bunch of ways to do it. It seems like they're doing some very... Just like, it, it's not like... It doesn't seem like it's very advanced, what they're doing. But they, they did a really good job of, like, hooking up an STM32 microcontroller, making it into a, a game controller, and then doing all this stuff where they, uh, you know, have it do the force feedback stuff. And one of the directions they pointed in is in a company called Granite Devices. Granite Devices makes that circuit board and the little daughter board that you can't see that's connected to it. That little circuit board over there and the daughter board that's connected to it are essentially an entire joystick. They're a game controller with a universal motor controller connected to it. So I can characterize this, this motor right here, characterize meaning finding out the properties of, and I can get it all programmed into that controller and then it can use it as a force feedback device. This is a two horsepower motor. This thing is a freaking workout to use. It's a lot of fun. It's very difficult. When you turn on the force feedback, you will be terrible at the game because you'll be fighting the wheel. It's great. I love it. Um, there's only so many button inputs in that. This steering wheel is an actual Mercedes S-Class steering wheel. I bought it when I started the project. It was expensive. It was expensive. It's a refurbished actual car part. The shifter that I originally used was given to me by my car buddies. It's an E46M3 Steptronic shifter, which is nice, but I'm not used to I'm not used to the shift up and shift down on a little, 
you know, uh, the rally style shifting that it does I'm not used to. I can still plug this into the system and use it, but we replaced it with an eight speed shifter. And this is actually a lot of work to get running. A lot of work to get running. This is a Thingiverse print, and it feels a lot like an actual car shifter. It's kind of hard to get into gear and everything, and the gears are in a logical location. It's all well and good, so that's cool. I bought E92, I think, BMW pedals. Those are connected to this big thing that I hook up to my office chair. So I have real pedals on the car that send beautifully crisp analog data all the way back to that microcontroller. And it all utilizes the LIN bus because that's what this thing speaks. This wheel speaks what's called the LIN bus. It's a digital communication protocol for automotive stuff made by the LIN consortium, which is basically VW and Audi and a bunch of other, those other Euro, you know, Hon Hon, those little pretentious car companies. They all decided to make this thing that was a lot simpler than CAN bus. And uh, they did. And so we reverse engineered the wheel because there's only so many LIN addresses that are that are that are out there, and then we made LIN peripherals for all of my other stuff. So this is a digital system. Technically, it probably should all be wireless, but it's not. So the Granite Devices SimuCube controller only takes so many button inputs. Ran out. I'd like to utilize them all, so I spent a lot of money buying what they sell as the wireless wheel module. This takes 24 buttons. This takes like 15, 12, I don't know. Um, this takes a lot of buttons into it, but I don't wanna make like a wireless Bluetooth thing on here. This takes so long to explain. I'm really sorry, chat. I've been trying to, to knock this project out for so long and it's been such a slog, but if I work on something else, I'm gonna lose all this momentum that we have. We're like this close. Uh. Watched a YouTube trying out a USB handbrake last night. Seems to be relevant. How is that? That's not relevant at all, man. Anyway, um, so this, this system here, I want to emulate without the wireless protocol. So we've been control we've been programming this microcontroller to communicate as if it were this, this transceiver right here. We're making progress, but the big breakthrough, one of the big breakthroughs, was was actually um, doing the logic sniffer. I, I bought a, a cheapo logic sniffer, and now we're able to look at the two devices communicating, and a logic sniffer will tell us what the what the bytes are that represent the serial data. Because I've got I've got things that I've written down on on Notepad documents about how like what signals are going where and how it's connecting, right? you know, what's happening where and how we're communicating with each other. And I've split it off into signals. It's, it's not working for some reason. So we're getting, we're getting to the nitty gritty. We're getting to the little bits that'll actually make it work. So that's what it is. And, and hopefully I'm gonna be playing My Summer Car soon and I hope you guys will be able to join me. I don't have a set date for that. I need to finish this. I'm gonna have tomorrow when I'm not streaming to really go through this and try to solve these problems. Cause it seems like Stuff's getting a little bit more complicated now. We can try, I got one or two things that I wanna try here, but yeah, if we got the lunatics coming in, I gotta do a full explanation. We had Cosmo Quest uh, raid earlier and they're cool too. You guys should check them out if you like space stuff. All right. So, 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 so. What is going on here? Well, this is the, GAP, SCAN, GAP, uh, there's all these acronyms right now, and I just treat them like words because like, it's like low energy generic access profile connect. So command lay gap connect, it's, it's madness. And the complexity is like, we're down in the weeds of the sort of like the ends, the end, the end little pieces of a project that are so complicated that it's hard. I. I feel for the people in chat that have not been following along. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, we're gonna get to simpler stuff when I solve this problem, but we need to solve this problem. So, okay, we have a scan response that gives us the ID of the Bluetooth thing. We have the signal that tells us to connect to a particular device. Cause there's, there's a form, there's a form to these commands. It's a, uh, so it's a response or a command, then it has a length, 
then it has a class, and then it has an ID. And then from there, we have the address, and then we have the handle that's assigned to this thing. We've had to work within that. Now, all this pertain, all this uh, conforms, sorry, to the the Scilabs Blue Gecko API. We can look up all the stuff that tells us exactly what these events are. I've had to get intimate with this document, and I didn't want to. I didn't want to. SI Labs uh, has has done things to me that I don't wish to to relay to you guys. Um, but I've got most of this memorized, and I really shouldn't. I really the amount of brain space that I've had to dedicate to this has been has been overwhelming. <sighs> Cause uh, you guys got to know, like all the stuff that I can find, like Arduino, right? Arduino. Every everybody everybody's done every project with the Arduino before, right? The Arduino is wonderful in that if you're rapid developing, you're doing rapid prototypes, which is what we do here. We do rapid prototypes. We build stuff as quick as possible and we get it running. Um, everybody and their dog has programmed everything and its dog how to function on an Arduino. That's just the way it is. It's, it's, a, it is, it's an extremely uh, competent and it's an extremely common platform. Typically, the way we do stuff is we look up, well, I want to do something that does this and this. Let's find a project that does this. Let's find a project that does this, and let's just put them all together, right? We're not talking about cats. Um, we just put two projects together, and we, we just kind of, like, get them to work, or we look at how two projects work, and we make our program work within that, those, those confines. It's quick. It works really well. Um, but... The problem with this project is we are trying to emulate being a module. Think about the Bluetooth module is that most of the projects that you find are people trying to use this module to do other stuff. Nobody's really tried to be this module. Nobody wants to be this module. They want to use this module. Now, those projects that use this module, I probably could get some information about how to connect to this module. But there are a lot of ways to connect to remote Bluetooth low energy devices. And actually, one of the coolest ways that people want to use Bluetooth low energy modules is to control diabetes medical hardware. I'm going to be doing that soon. I'm going to be using a program called Looper in order to connect to an insulin pump and my, my glucose monitoring stuff in order to basically automate a pancreas. It's going to be pretty cool. But so I'm not really able to find a project that tells me how to connect to this module or to emulate this module exactly. I got 12 hours of sleep last night and I still have dark circles under my eyes. What the fuck is wrong with me? Anyway, <laughs> I literally got 12 hours of sleep. Why are you vibing in chat? All right. Um, so I, I know this signaling intimately and I'm comparing two trace... Uh, two, two logic captures in order to figure out what the hell is going on here, right? So we have said, we've gotten a command that says, hey, I need you to connect to this module and call it one. One of these, by the way, one of these sessions is a module that is known. Uh, one of these is this thing connecting and it does the whole thing. The other one is our microcontroller attempting to connect and then just completely fucking it up and nothing nothing works. So we want to know what's going on here. So yeah, um, hey, uh, connect to this module, call it number one. Our immediate response, their immediate response is 2331A00 blah 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 one. What is 31A? I think it's a confirmation. I think we're confirming the connect. Our response, however, this thing is hard to navigate because of the the uh, sheer amount of time between signals. Three nine six zero zero one. What the hell is that? Why is it doing that? I think we're responding with the wrong signal. Oops. Uh. All right. This document was us calling this thing. So three nine one a o three one a three 
Command gap connect. So this is our confirmation of the connection. If we look up command lay gap connect, it's part of a, a, a string of commands that comes through. So we look in our code, which is another, oh God, it's another OBS window. Hold on. <laughs> I need to work on my setup. My setup is confusing. Oh God. All right. Um, 31A001 command lay gap connect. That should be around here, right? Now. Okay, so this is what happens when all of our registers fill up. And I think what we need to do is we, we might need to pull these commands into one singular uh event. We'll see. Uh that's that's what that's my that's what I suppose. Uh command lay gap connect is a spe it's a special packet because it has the handle at the end. So CMD LE gap connect event. I think it's event lay gap connect actually. EDT LE connection parameters. Uh, connection open. Gap connect. That's O command to. Gap connect. Control copy. Control F. Find it down below. We put our handle in there. We do A039600 and then the handle. So we know to send that. We know to send that when event one has been triggered. And that should be in response to uh, gap connect. So in our receive, and that one's which one? O2. So we should be sending 0x0002. There it is. Command gap connect response. When we get gap connect, we do a bunch of stuff. If the input buffer is this or that or that, we send an error. If, if, if it's the wrong handle, we send an error. Otherwise, gap connect gets sent back. So we should be doing that. We should be able to do that perfectly fine within our logic. Let's look at our logic again. Look at our logic again. Oh my God. Like I said, all the people here from Louis, they're probably the only people who are left are probably asleep. Everybody else left. Uh, <laughs> this is complicated. Session one is our device. Session two is the known good device, the one that actually gets this procedure done. And the way we know that is because it's sending junk data after it gets this command. So 396001 is not 31A001. Wait a minute. Wait just one tootin minute. Three nine six. Ah, it's a mistake. Aha. That is why it was not pleased with us. Yes. That's not three one A. Length is how long is this? Is it three three? Hold on, wait a minute. Look at the data. Let's uh, hold on. You gotta go back. We gotta go back and we gotta look at what is three nine six is not right. Uh, we want three three one A. This is all stupid. Three three one A. Man, it would be cool to do some GTA GTA RP. I've never broken into that community. I don't even know what I do. Probably figure something out. Something way removed from this crap. <laughs> Where I can actually like relax. All right, save that. So we had a bad we had a bad uh, setup. See, I set up all these functions so that they'd look like that data sheet so that I could easily just bop, bop, bop back and forth, right? I'm trying to do this whole program with very simple structures, right? RP is a taxi driver, that's a little too. Chat, your ideas are not better than mine. <laughs> but a 
chop shop. All right, as if uh, you guys are like the most played out ideas I've ever heard. Uh, let's upload that to our controller and see if it works. Because apparently, ah, we did a bunch of stuff, but it wouldn't it wouldn't like recognize our signals as proper. And I I don't think this is the problem all along. But we've got a lot of little little issues throughout the entire program, and this is a cut and paste error. You know, I, I various states of mind when I was going through this stuff. Uh, cutting and pasting signals and editing all the little binary bits that, that make up this whole thing. It, it, you know, you introduce mistakes very, very easily uh, this way. So we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're making progress. It's very slow. But uh, we're, we're working our way towards the end of this code. And maybe, just maybe, you know, maybe, maybe I'll get lucky enough that parts of my code actually don't have tiny errors in it, and I get past a couple steps while we're doing this. It seems like every single every single way that we can trip up, we've tripped up. Okay, so we're gonna keep this is like this is like the sacred window. This the the comparison between the two signals is like the sacred window. We can redo this capture. This one is like part of our problem solving apparatus. So let's um let's upload the code again. Let's make sure that it gets Let's see where it gets to on the serial read. Oh man, fucking heartburn. So I need to plug this thing back in. This would be the microcontroller here. Let me, um... What did I say about your ideas? That was like a full record scratch. Fuck you talking... Okay, anyway. Um, stupid. All right. Well, no, we should get more of a desk shot. I should, I should have a little bit more in here. At least people maybe see the thumbnail and think it's interesting. The, uh, yeah, the problem is this is a bad impression for everybody who wants to work with electronics. This stuff is just like so, so complicated right now. So, okay, let's plug this in. Let's upload our code and let's see what happens. <laughs> thanks for the thanks for the raid, Louie. <laughs> Upload. Oh yeah, tools, port. That one. Upload. When this thing first compiles, it takes forever. All right, so here we are. Serial started. Button packet it sends for some reason. Turn it on. Let's see what we get. One, two, three. Blah, blah, blah. Button packet. All right, we got errors still. All right, so we're back. We're, I think we're where we were anyway. Copy that. Make sure nothing new is happening. Yeah, it's doing the same thing where it does the replies to the timing. There, There's a timeout. There's like a keep alive timing thing that comes up. I've seen a stream. I, maybe it was Boone that was being a police dog, but it wasn't that interesting. It wasn't that fun. He did some stuff that was fun, though. But it wasn't that fun. All right. So timer, timer, timer. Set connection parameters. Success. Timer. Security configure. Success on the security configure. Timer 2. Discovery started. Uh, successfully started. Set soft timer. Uh, for. There's no internal for that. Oh, because it stops the timer. Yeah, there it is. Stop the timer. So success on the timer. Timer stopped successfully. This is all ser serial is a lot of confirmation. It's ask and confirm kind of stuff. So um, I, I did the serial prints to kind of help us keep track of that and things that are happening internally at the same time. So we say uh, scan response. And it says, hey, connect to this address. And we go, all right, that's this one. And then we send, hey, the connection's open. Here are the connection parameters. Here's the fee status. I don't even know what that is, but we send it anyway. 
and then it says end the procedure and we go yeah we end this procedure and it says hey send uh these parameters and we go all right we set the parameters and we might be sending the wrong parameters here that's the next one we got to look at uh hey set this other soft timer okay we got your timer and then it sets sets the 2700 timer then we say uh zero the buttons zero the buttons again and we say set these connection parameters and here's here's another thing that says we're done and then nothing fucking happens and it just keeps asking for the parameters again and again so something something is out of whack here bah. we've almost got it but it's it's weird <sighs> get him to you let's look at not the event connection parameters what are we supposed to send what are we supposed to send here so gap end procedure i want to look at gap end procedure what does that look like first off end procedure eh. end procedure 2033 that's what we were looking at look at that look at that there it is well no that's not the that's not the one that's 1a 233 three, and we want no we want 2233 three, not 1a that's not end procedure end procedure happens like way over here yeah Yeah, 2033, there it is. So that's, that's hey, stop stop giving me this data. I'm, I'm done. And what's happening here is there's another scan response coming in. It's like, shut the hell up. It's like trying to stop it. Hold on, there might be a secret signal piggybacked onto this. 6, 9, 53, 43, 2D, blah, blah, blah. A0880. Here it is. Length of eight, eight zero. So that's a connection parameters that was suddenly snuck onto the end of whatever that was. So this is set connection parameters. Now eight zero was which one? Is it the depreciated one or is it the the one that we want? This is how complicated this is. is we've got to look for hidden signals and stuff. We're actually being hackers. Eight zero, so here it is. The command lay connection. I'm gonna make this larger for you guys. Command lay connection set parameters. That's what we've got piggybacked onto that other signal. And then in the meantime, little bastards telling us, telling us to stop. Why is that not scan? Jeez. Telling us to stop scanning. And we immediately send three three. To confirm that we stopped scanning. A08. Oh, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. What was that one? No, it's 0A. Sorry. A0. This is the length. 82. That's another signal. These come in in rapid fire. And I think maybe I need to have them come in in rapid fire in order for them to recognize. I think maybe too much time has passed. Trying to be a Scandinavian motor controller. 3016, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. That's more than 16. Oh, 16 is 18. Uh, 17, 18. It's like 22, 19, 20, 21, 22. Yeah, 22 in, in, in hexadecimal. Hexadecimal is not uh decimal decimal is what we normally count in hexadecimal adds a b c d e f on the end of zero through nine um and that's a way that computers talk so if we do value if we do zero x in front of the value in the compiler that means that it is in hexadecimal so it gets a little confusing because if we say one six that's not decimal 16 that's hexadecimal to decimal and in decimal it's 22. numbering systems how do they work uh, so A0, B80, B80, well, it's not, it's not the normal length, but it's 0B. So it's two longer than this, which means that this table at the end is a little longer. 
Um, that should be our next signal coming in. Uh, after we've sent what? Three three one A zero one. That's uh the connect signal three one A. At three one A we should trigger. Which is the one A is which one? Because that's what comes out of that gap end procedure. Command set parameters, but that comes back to us. Gap end procedure. That's what we receive. No end procedure comes in before that. Connect phi status. Or is it this one? Or is it that one? Or is it this one? 31A is, I think, connect. Yeah. So connect to this one. We've connected to this one. Then we send a bunch of bullshit. But that's later. So there should be a, a delay. So it says connect to this address. And then we say we've connected this address. And there should be a big delay. No, connection opened, and then there should be a big delay. And then connection parameters immediately following that is B status, which I don't even know what that is. So connect to that, and then we get another signal here, 028410. So 84 is phi status. I'm seriously, like, lost here. Wait a minute, what? Huh? Well, huh? Oh, 1M Phi or 2M Phi. That doesn't, doesn't really matter. Phi is, PHY is just like the power. Uh, set Phi. Come on, show me the thing that I'm looking for. Eight four and then and then handle and then phi. Eight four handle then phi. Eight four handle phi. But that's all in one just like just like chunked up signal. The way we're sending it looks like I gotta put all this stuff on the table so that I can figure out what the hell's going on. Cause we're sending, it seems like we're sending all the right stuff. We're not sending this anymore, but um, we send that connection thing and all our stuff is, is spread out like this. Uh, B801D, 2CC41428, blah, 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 that's the address. Blah, 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 FF. Are we really sending out FF on the end of that? We shouldn't be. We'll probably be sending O1 on the end of that, and then we'll know to connect to the right thing. <clears throat> 8216. So our connection, what is the... This is the piece of data that changes between them. And then... Where's the 82? A0... Eight two, one six zero 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 thirty two. Oh no, no, it's thirty two zero zero one B zero one B one B thirty two six. Yeah, eight zero one B. I mean, this the 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 difference between these packets sending all as one thing directly on the end of the scan versus spreading them out by twenty milliseconds. I don't think really matters that much. Maybe it does. It's the only thing that I can think to try at this point. Aside from rooting out packets that I got completely wrong. But I guess we'll try chunking them all up together. So when we send what this is supposed to be, we send a fee status and then it does a, a giant scan response. I don't know if we're triggering off of that scan response, but if it sends that giant status... No, not this giant set. If it sends 1A, 
So this one is 31A. So if we send 31A and then we do a little delay and then we send it the chunk of stuff, maybe it'll respond properly. Why is it messing up right there? That's weird. 2330. That's N scan. 320. <clears throat> okay, all right. We'll try it. We'll try it. I'm I'm sort of at my wit's end uh in terms of like getting this right. I don't know why it's not responding to certain stuff. I mean, I guess I could I could set up like a junk a junk scan response and piggyback that all together and just make it look exactly like the signal that it's expecting. I don't think that's the solution to our problem though, but but we found like a clear smoking gun and that didn't solve it either. So we're at a point where we're kind of stuck. Let's try mashing the signals together. So that happens over here. Uh, let's do, we have, what have we done? We've, <laughs> what have I done? We've received, here we are, gap connect. So we receive gap connect, which is an 031A. Amazing. Wow, what a what a great and nuanced opinion you have about getting banned from my channel. <sighs> you can you can plea on the Discord to be unbanned, but uh everything you said was fucking stupid, so you're gone. All right, anyway, uh back to here. It's a totally fucking stupid shit. I'm sick of dealing with those kind of people. All right, 31A. Oh, 031A. We are in the documentation here. Actually, no, we're looking for it on the trace. So 31A. And that's probably right about here. Nope. C0, 31A. We're triggering this, this set of events off of 31A. So I'm trying to find where, is 31A out here? Yeah, 31A is over here. 31A. Okay, we received this one. But this one... Scan response. And then all this other stuff. But we're getting... Uh, uh, we're getting the appropriate, like... 31A, we get end procedure. We get the connection. a soft timer and then we try to do this stuff and it doesn't work like we're getting through the whole procedure i don't understand why it doesn't recognize it at all this is the so 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 confusing button packet connection parameters mtu maybe we should butt all of these up together Maybe that needs to be one signal. Because our spaced out signaling, it's okay with. Well, so far as I'm so far as I'm aware, it seems like it doesn't like the connection parameters, and maybe I'm getting confused in the complexity of all of this. Maybe that's what's going on. <laughs> it's a bot account. Why would you bot Twitch like that? No, get the fuck out of here. Um, motherfucker. I don't know what the problem is. If it, if it doesn't recognize these signals coming in, because, like, this would be the last thing that we respond to. All this stuff, the fee status and stuff, that appears to be recognized because it says end procedure and then we get the connection parameters and we reply to that and then it's it it sets the right soft timer which may or may not be its own independent thing i'm not i'm not totally sure about that oh my god i'm so this is giving me a headache i need more water i think i think all that red bull is getting to my head 
yeah, the fake receiver has a different address from what we're connecting, but everything seems to recognize it perfectly fine. The um, Granite Devices controller, we don't know how it handles two different modules, but it appears to be okay with the fact that these two are auto-connecting and that they have the handle 01. They seem to be okay with that. Now, I could make it have its own thing, but... I'm generating too much lift. It's like in Kerbal when you cl clip like seven wings into one. Yeah, that's it's not it's not just connecting the fake module. It's our entire microcontroller. But yeah, that's what that's what we're looking at. I don't know if you understand what's going on. Um, <laughs> hold on, let me let me tell you what's going on. So we have two logic traces. Session one is our microcontroller attempting to fake being the module. Session two is an actual connection between the module here, the remote wheel here, and the base station. That's what session one and two are. So session two is everything happening the way it's supposed to be happening. It's the triple T. It's, it's gonna condense the nonsense. Um, so this one is an actual module connection. This one is us trying to fake being a module, and we've used it to root out a problem like the one we just saw. Now that problem that we just saw, I thought would be the root of all the problems of the, the thing, but it gets beyond that step. It gets beyond that step, so I thought it would be requesting less stuff. I'm so confused. Ah. <sighs> So I don't know how to open this stuff up in another window. I wonder if I can just take screenshots of the different, just take, make a make a document that's all the screenshots of all these different things going together, and then I can cross compare. Because I don't I don't know if it's a timing issue if this group of signals triggers more stuff to happen. Because this group of signals here, we send it this data. It seems like it gets beyond that. It says, hey, uh, I need you to stop scanning. And then we go, all right, I stopped scanning. And then it goes, hey, can you, um, can you set these parameters? You go, yeah, yeah, I got that. I can set those parameters. And it goes, hey, uh, here's a timer that I want you to set. All right, we set the timer. Then we go, all right, uh, no buttons are pressed. And all the way out here, we go, hey. Here's a, uh, what is this one? This is no buttons are pressed. Here's some data. Here's a fee status. Or no, here's, here's the module connect being done. We're done. And over here we go, timer expired, pizza time. And then this thing goes, can I get a, like an RSSI? They're like, yes, you can get an RSSI and here's the data. And that happens over and over again, ad infinitum, infinitum. And then randomly it'll, it'll like request something in the middle of doing that. And I don't know what's wrong, but apparently it's not happy with something we've done. Ah, this is so frustrating, chat. I don't know what the fuck's going on here. I don't know why this is failing on us like this, you know? I'm, I, this is the third stream in a row that I'm going to end in frustration. We've made this much progress. <laughs> We've taken a baby step. I've still got, I've still got like an hour. I, I want to keep going for another hour, um, but I'm, I'm out of stuff that I really want to try. It's not so clear because there's so much happening right now. I would like to top and bottom compare these two. Dump the bin. Uh, I mean, I can, I can give you. I can give you uh, like a like a view. I just I think I need to capture new data because because I find that when I give when I give chat that kind of info, they kind of stumble over it. And I would like to give you guys all the info, all the code and stuff like that that I'm working with. You can get um, the document that is my capture of all the different steps right here. This is in the Discord. It's actually below the code uh, in the stream project section of the Discord. If you want to take a look at that.
Radair 2. What is that? I've never heard of that. Radair 2. I can give you the good module, Ben. If that'll help. I don't know which one this is. I don't know which one to send you. Which one is the bin? What the fuck is a what the fuck is a bin? Open bench. <laughs> you gotta tell me which one of these formats you want. Reverse engineering. Oh, you want a bin of the of the man. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So here, uh, I don't. I know that sounds really cool and advanced, but like this is a Sale Logic, uh, Bluetooth module. I don't fucking know how to get the bin out of this thing. Holy shit. Um, this has like the custom Scandinavian code within it. Actually, I think this would probably be the more interesting one to get. This one runs a port expander, and then it, you know, there's it mostly, I mean, it uses Oh man, fuck if I know. I mean, there's test pins on the back. That's not the six JTAG pins, though. We got a 10-pin interface on the back. Those might just be test points, though. Um, on the front, though, I mean, I guess you could probably access the JTAG pins, but I'm not, not going to do that, man. We're so close, and I have such a raging headache right now. I got 12 hours of sleep last night, and I have a headache? That's not fair. <laughs> Literally got 12 hours. I, I had a doctor's appointment yesterday, and I missed I got like three hours of sleep. So uh, last night, I, I was like, it was like 8.30 p.m., and I'm like, you know, I, I got to fucking sleep. And then I overslept. I'll probably feel great tomorrow. I have absolutely no idea, man. I, I don't know what they do with the code in this. So, Lord knows whether or not you'd be able to get anything out of it. Uh, I would love to have that level of competence applied to this to do some kind of, like, logic, or some kind of uh, actual code reverse engineering, but, yeah. It's, it's a madness, but it's, I mean, it's the appropriate kind of madness. I, I salute you for suggesting doing that. Um... We're, we're close with this. There's like some stuff that I want to try and get straight. So I've been explaining why, what I wanted to try next over and over again. I'm just not sure whether or not it's the right place to go. So this is our module. It says, hey, connect to this module. We say, yeah, I'll connect to that module. Million years later, we have another scan response for another Bluetooth device in the area. This one is 7AC943D76B08. It's probably my my glucometer or something like that. Some shit that it shouldn't be scanning. Um, and then piggybacked onto that, it gives uh A0, so B80. So it gives a um a depreciated command that describes the connection details. And then it sends an 8-2. So wait, no, 8-0 is which? 8-0 is... Oh, EVT connection opened. Low energy connection opened, and it says, hey, I've never connected to you before. Which is what this one does. I think we say we have connected to it before. <laughs> it Listen, this is a curse, knowing what some of these connections are. <laughs> it's a fucking curse. Uh, eight zero, blah blah blah. We're, we're actually sending an FF. All right. One one double F. You know how we roll. So yeah, we're rolling exactly the same. You know, we're rolling in the deep when the mind goes numb and the blah blah blah. blah. Um... 821 blah 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 1b same thing we're sending the same thing we're just a little spaced out about how we do it 1b connection fee status is on the end of that 
I don't know. I mean, I, I think this is coming through properly. I just don't know why it keeps asking us for more of them. It keeps asking us for more of these connection datas, and so it's not satisfied with something we're telling it. Arrgh. I, I don't want to sleep on this. I've had enough sleep for two days. <laughs> I want to attack this and get it done. End connection procedure. Uh, or no, 3-3 three, three is, yeah, 3-3 three, is end the procedure. And we're like, yeah, we won the procedure. And then it's 8-0, uh, so this is a different um, parameter, 32. Oh, no, this is a command lay set connection parameters. And then we acknowledge it. We acknowledge it, same thing. 8000. Zero, zero, zero. Look up um, here. This is just, this is just the... Um... <laughs> I was going to do this. Here, look that up. <laughs> <laughs> See what you can discover. Now, here's the here's the uh here's the API. Here's the API. It's 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 a UART. It's just the back and forth communication. There's a lot of uh depreciated signals in there. Uncle Phil uh uncle level. <laughs> That's what it looks like. He's probably watching tomato right now. Uh, but anyway, he um, he's he's one of those people that I accidentally uh, catfished from Tomato. <laughs> I, I like I like chatting in streams, and I'm often not representing myself nicely in those streams. And every now and then, people follow me back to my stream. I'm not looking for that, but um, he was one of the people that followed 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 back from Tomato and and Rob Oz too. Um, he's a good friend, but. Uh, he found the appropriate API. He found the good API. So um, we found, or sorry, he found an API, and then we found the appropriate one. This is the appropriate one. It's got some stuff in it that's a little bit different. But the SI Labs Bluetooth module, if you want to connect to it, uh, it's, it is UART. It just speaks 115200 TXRX. So hooking it up to an Arduino is not that hard. All we need to do is serial... Uh, Where's TX? All we need to do is just send uh, stuff that's in a buffer. So I put all this stuff in the buffer, and then is my send command in here? Well, like in order to send a success, we just send the the the, the bits, and according to the sniffer it's all coming out properly so i guess we could load up a whole thing and just send it out all at once but whatever this is working just fine like even our serial sniffer isn't really all that confused about what we're sending <sighs> why learn signal analysis i guess i don't know if i'm neglecting anything signal analysis wise i think all the yelling at at my monitors right now um the streaming is literally yelling at a wall um <laughs> so i'm yelling at this wall and trying to figure out all these problems but do i have a direct question i'm trying to answer it's not follow it's not like it's not finishing what we're supposed to be doing we get all this stuff and then we end up just stuck in a loop here so command gap end procedure is not getting a reply that it likes. It thinks that it needs to keep ending the gap procedure. It sends it here and we give it a success and then we do some stuff with the hardware parameters, but then it's like, yeah, we're looking for the right questions. Yeah, so what it's supposed to be doing around here is it supposed to be sending an MTU, or sorry, a, a, a GAT command. GAT commands are the internal controller commands. Watching you doing this work has been inspiring. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's, it's tough stuff. I mean, you step up to the plate when you do stuff like this, right?
I mean, the requests could be wrong because I'm bad at what I'm doing. <laughs> I could be sending something that it's not, that it doesn't want to see. What is our get connect response? Well, when it says stop, we just tell it, yeah, we stopped. That's that 3 3 command. There's nothing else to that. Something else is triggering that command in order to come back at us. But what happens when we, so we, I feel like the param the connection parameters are what's setting it off. We were able to get this to, to not send gap procedures and it just kept the timer going. There was nothing new coming out of the thing. And that's where we got stuck. That's when, when we received, or when we discovered the um, fee status command. There's always like one little detail that we're missing, right? And that's why the that's why the the, the uh, logic analyzer has been been sort of instrumental now in doing this because my own program was missing stuff, and that's what I was afraid was happening here, but it appears not to be the case. I mean, we we sent all those things, we sent them clumsily, but it seems okay with it because it's like, hey, stop, and we're like, yeah, we stopped, and then it's like, hey, uh, can you set these parameters? And we're like, yeah, all right, we did it. I was like, hey, uh, set a timer. We're like, all right, we set a timer. Like, that looks just like where it does that, right? So where are we setting 3-3? Three, three? Here it is. Hey, stop scanning. We're like, all right, we stopped scanning. We're done scanning. Hey, why don't you set these parameters? We're like, all right, set the parameters. It's like, hey, let's get a glizzy. And we're like, no, we don't want glizzies right now. We're at our burgers. Uh, set the timer. Timer set. It's Joe Byron. Uh, B94111. So this is a button. So this time it's not delaying. Before I saw it send an empty button and then it did all this stuff at once. So maybe we need to send all that shit all at once. The button, etc. So let's go to the TX engine part of the code. And we get a glizzy. Uh, we go to the TX engine, and what we're doing is we are setting a zeroed button packet. But instead, what I want to do is set up a new thing. So let's set up a new TX that's going to send these three all at once. Four. Four all at once? Wait a minute, what are we doing? Hold on a minute. B94111, that's, that's send a button. So uh, everything before the four, no, after the four, that's 0000, zero, zero, zero F0 zero for the button status. 390, I forget what, which one that is. 90, we can look that up. This is number three, it's 82. There's no command after, so there's three commands that get sent in rapid fire. And then we try to send this one, the 94111, another button. And this one has... This one has the fee status on the end of it. Why does it do it that way? This is not what we observed with the other connection. What are they doing here? They're, they're setting up the MTU connect over here. You fucking assholes. We're sending it all the data that it wants. Why is it such an asshole to us? It doesn't like us. Oh, man. You want both the Sigrox sessions? How do I send... The Sigrox session. You gotta let me know, because I don't know how to fucking use the so I don't know how to use the software. Just an SR? Okay. So this would be... Right, hold on. Oh, we're in the Merc wheel. Uh, thing already. So, save these in the Arduino section. Uh, and then this one is session two. So this one is the uh, uh, module. What the? I'm working on a tiny keyboard. And 
and the other one is now keep in mind we've corrected some of the errors from this session Arduino the module go to face cam because I don't know what I don't know what windows are going to open where and it fills me with panic uh, so this one, I'm in the stream projects, and then I go to Arduino. Do I need to include the PVS? What is the PVS? I don't know what that is. All right, let's just put them all in. Four files, there you go. You guys can play around with that if you want. One's probably the settings style, a uh, settings file. Sorry. <sighs> All right, chat. I have a headache. I need to figure out what the the hell the problem is because it appears like we're doing everything right, but it's just not. It doesn't like it. I think maybe it doesn't like the settings parameters. Maybe I'm sending the wrong one. That might be it. But I don't even know what that is. What is DFU utils? Let me pop me a note in the stream projects, because I gotta take a break from this. I've been doing it for four, four and a half hours, right? How long have I been doing this? For years. Four, four hours and 18 minutes, just like, just like balls to the wall with this thing. Let me look up DFU utils on a, on a window right here that you guys can't see. My windows are all over the place today just because I've, I've rearranged things so that it looks a little bit more natural when I'm programming. DFU util. Host side implementation of DFU 1.0. And okay, I don't know what that is. Uh, download an upper firmware to from devices connected over USB. <laughs> That's not going to work. I'm not. You want me to get into hardcore, uh, like machine instruction, reverse engineering. You're like my buddy. You're like a buddy of mine. I don't think we need to do that. And plus we're not we're not USB connected. Now, one thing I would be very curious about. One thing I'd be very curious about is whether or not the Granite Devices SimuCube has some way to trigger direct button presses that isn't a Bluetooth module. But that's incredibly complicated. And I don't think DFU tools or any of these other uh reverse engineering of binary kind of programs are going to come up with anything. According to the white sheet, it supports DFU firmware flashing and upload. It might also support and download if we're lucky. Oh, that's interesting. Ooh, I wouldn't know the first thing about connecting it, though. Um, I'm going at this problem from this angle. I'm going to keep doing that. I have to make progress on Wednesday. Uh, my stomach is starting to do, like, somersaults. I don't know why. Could have been the taco salad that I ate for lunch. <laughs> it could be all the yelling at the computer, though. Um, it supports DFU. You might be able to find the firmware online. I don't think so, man. I don't think we're going to be able to find the firmware online. I mean, maybe to get to the, the GAT MTU, the firmware might help us. If you, if you guys discover something about the firmware, and I, this is, this is offloading a lot of work to you guys, and that's not fair. Um, it's possible that we find... I mean, it's, we're probably perfectly capable of finding the Bluetooth module online, but like I said earlier, there's probably a thousand and one ways to connect to a remote module with this thing. We're looking through the API and stuff, and we, we seem to be finding a sequence of events that gets us to this GAT MTU connect. And we're like this fucking close. I don't do any work. What, at work or here? And the answer is probably yes, the all-inclusive yes. Um, the Scandinavians at at Granite Devices have, have have programmed some characteristic GATT uh, responses from this thing. Now we've come at this from a from a perspective of not knowing anything at all, right? It's possible that we find some kind of a program that tells us the procedure to get a singular remote device with a UUID registered and connected and and at handle 01, and I would be annoyed and embarrassed at all the time that I wasted getting all the rest of the code to work. 
it seems like we're on the very final steps of that, and I don't know why it's not working. My code is very complicated, and it's doing most of what it needs to do. I feel like we're like one signal correction away from getting this thing to work. It's weird, some of the steps are out of order, and I've, I've kind of made my code work with that. It's weird that we have button connect and a couple signals, and then we have, sorry, buttons are at zero, here's a couple signals, buttons are at zero, here are a couple more signals, when those buttons haven't been even set up yet. They haven't been set up yet. I don't know if maybe they're required to get the thing up and connected. We're emulating that because we know nothing about our host device. Maybe we will know something if, if people look up um, the SI Labs Blue Gecko module connection procedure. I would love to get a little list of events that have to happen in order to get us up and connected. Because then I could cross compare with my software and make all the corrections. But before I puke on stage, I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna have to end the stream. Uh, connection must be open manually from the CMU configuration tool or via true drive software. Well, the other one connects directly. Yeah, I did do that. I, I've done it for the real module. I've done it for the fake module. The real module connects and stays connected. The fake module connects and then leaves and then connects again. It's weird the way it does it. It like loses the connection because it doesn't like the parameters. All those messages are also printing statements over serial so we can troubleshoot. Yes. If I come up with anything new to try, we can look at the, all the signals. Um, the document that I posted after the code, uh, oh, I can't, I don't, I'm not gonna show it right now. The document with all the equal signs in it that shows all the signals, that's from a cap, an initial capture of a good device connecting. And I sort of like edited the document. That was last stream. And we, we also, again, frustratingly, didn't really come to any conclusions with that. I feel like today we're closer, but it's still not working. My code compiles. It's all there. Everything is ready to go. We just need to rearrange the procedure in, in little minor ways. So, so I'm going to be on Discord. I'll be there as soon as tonight uh, working on this stuff and getting frustrated and wanting to fucking slam my head against the wall. And also nuclear burping. Uh, we're going to have to work with this a little bit more. I thought I was closer than I was. Again. <laughs> Sorry, guys. We'll have fun when this thing is done, and then we'll get back into some like more projecty kind of stuff. Like, we'll do we'll do some designing of stuff. I, I still want to do the water cooler on my computer. Got to work on that a little bit. The V6 platform. We'll figure it out though. We'll figure it out. All right. Here is the end card. You can follow me on things if you want. Um. So, yeah, that's how you know it's real debugging. Yeah, when you want to. When you want to put a, a little indentation of the pattern of your wall on your face. Garbage from the prints? What's that? If, um... Overloading the serial buffer? Mm, I don't think so. Um, although, we wouldn't know because I have the serial buffer looking for a specific character in order to uh, reply. But then again, the logic analyzer output, the logic analyzer doesn't the logic analyzer would output anything, right? So if we were overloading the serial buffer, then we would see a bunch of junk in, in the logic analyzer. The logic analyzer is very clean. So I don't think that's it. I don't think that's it. Anyway, there's all the information that you need. Um, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna kick it back for a little while and, and maybe I'll have a little cry. And uh, we're gonna try, try to get this thing working on Thursday. I might pivot and do something different on Thursday. I, I need something new to do because I feel so bad about all the all the people that raided today because they came in. They're like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> it's like, it doesn't make any sense. Usually what we do makes sense. Uh, we just have gotten into the weeds with this thing for what I want to do. Uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll catch you guys soon. Uh, Till then, I don't know. I don't know what to say. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you guys later. Uh...